the certified management examination board by prescribing the composition of the board, circumstances under which a vacancy can arise in the board, the functioning of the board, as well as the appointment of the chief executive officer of the board, and the funds of the board, which shall such money may be payable to a board. The Chairperson Budget and Appropriations Committee will be moving a motion. The motion is on consideration of the budget estimates. This is for the financial year 2021-2022. The Chairperson Budget Committee will be moving that the House adopts the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee. This is on the budget estimates for the national government as well as the judiciary and parliament for the financial year 2021-2022. And that particular report was laid on the table of the House on Tuesday, June 8th, the year being 2021, and passed on through the provisions of Article 221 of the Constitution of Kenya, Section Number 39. This is of the Public Finance Management Act, Number 2012, and Standing Orders Number 239. The House approves the issuance of 1.9 trillion shillings from the consolidated funds to meet the expenditure during the year ending 30th June 2022 in respect of the votes contained in the first schedule of the order paper. The second motion is by the Chairperson Public Accounts Committee on the report of the Auditor General. This is on the General of the Financial Statements for the National Government. This is for the year 2017-2018 that the House adopts the report of the Public Accounts Committee on the examination of the report of the Auditor General. This is on the financial statements of the National Government for the year 2017-2018. And that particular report was laid on the table of the House on March 23rd, 2021. Now, members of the August House will be resuming debate on that particular motion, which was interrupted on the June 8th on a Tuesday, 2021. Members of the National Assembly continue streaming in into the chamber ahead of the commencement of this afternoon sitting where members are expected to debate a couple of motions as well as bills that will be tabled before the floor of the House. Honorable Member for Igembe South, pursuant to Standing Orders Number 42A, Subsection 5, will be asking the Cabinet Secretary for Lands and Physical Planning to explain why there have been multiple demarcations of land described as Amagendi B, Sub C as well as Igembe South Sub-County since 1992 to date, with each demarcation giving different land registration numbers, are thereby creating confusion and suspicion, as well as conflict in that particular region. Those particular questions by the member for Igembe South will be replied before the Departmental Committee on Matters Lands. The Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Justin Moturi, has just stepped into the chamber and I'll now hand over for the live broadcast. Enjoy your viewing. Good afternoon. Who in wisdom and goodness have appointed the office of leaders and parliaments for the welfare of society and the just government of the people. We beseech you to behold with your abundant favor as the servants whom you've been pleased to court the performance of important trust in this republic. Let your blessings descend upon us here assembled and grant that we treat and consider all matters that shall come under deliberation in so just and faithful a manner 
as to promote your honor and glory and to advance the peace, prosperity, and welfare of our country and of those whose interests were committed to our church. Amen. Order number one, administration of oath. Order number two, communication from the chair. We can proceed, proceed. Order number three, messages. Order number four, petitions. members, uh, pursuant to operations of standing order 225, subsection 1, paragraph B, I wish to report to the House that I have received a petition from Messrs. Anthony Manyara and John Wangai, asking that the National Assembly do repeal section 22, subsection 1 of the Elections Act 2011. Honour members, for clarity, section 21 Section 22, paragraph 1, no, paragraph B of, of subsection 1 of the said act provides, and I quote, a person may be nominated as a candidate for an election under this act only if that person uh, in B, Roman, Romans 1 and 2, uh, in the case of a member of parliament, is a holder of a degree from a university recognized in Kenya, Roman 2, or in the case of a member of a county assembly, a degree rec from a university recognized in Kenya. Pursuant to Section 1A of the Act, the cited professions are to come into force and apply to qualifications for candidates in the general elections to be held after the 2017 general elections being August 2022 general elections. Honour members, the petitioners argue that section 22, subsection 1, paragraph B, are unconstitutional to the extent that they are discriminatory, inconsist inconsistent with the constitutional pre preserves in the Bill of Rights, and against the will and sovereignty of the people, who constitutionally are the ones to elect their representatives irrespective of academic credentials. They further argue that since the COVID-19 pandemic disrupted the academic calendar. <laughs> Some sitting and aspiring candidates who do not meet the academic requirements may be disadvantaged as they may not have completed the pursuit of their degrees within the projected time period of less than two years to the next elections. In addition, the petitioners claim that the university degree requirement will make political leadership a preserve of the elite and will, and will disenfranchise a number of good leaders who may not have been privileged to pursue higher education. And our members, the petitioners therefore pray that this House deletes Section 22, Subsection 1, Paragraph B of the Elections Act in its entirety so as to provide a fair play fee, playground to all candidates seeking elective positions regardless of their educational backgrounds. Honourable members, on the same breath, 
one James Murithi Ndwiga of ID number 25976982 has also petitioned the National Assembly proposing that the National Assembly delete the same section and substituting it with the following new section, and I quote the proposed provision, be a holder of a certificate, comma, diploma, or other post-secondary school qualification acquired one year before a general election or election recognized by the relevant ministry and in such manner as may be prescribed by the Education Act, close the quotes. Honour members, having determined that the matters raised in the two petitions are well within the authority of this House, pursuant to the provision of Standing Order 227, these consolidated petitions stand committed to the Departmental Committee of Justice and Legal Affairs. The committee is required to consider the petition and report its findings to the House and the petitioners in accordance with Standing Order 227, subsection 2. The committee may also introduce a bill to this House proposing to legislate in the manner prayed for by the petitioners. I thank you, now, members. There is no question. <laughs> well, honour members, uh, well, you know, the petitioners have a right, of course, to petition the House, but of course, uh, it's also fair to appreciate that uh, Article 99 of the Constitution, among other qualifications, states that such, such, qualifica such educational qualifications as may be prescribed by an act of parliament. So he, I think even that they talk about unconstitutionalism, they may need also then to also address uh, Article 99. I hope all our members, not all of you want to comment on this. Honorable Duale. The speaker, I, I want to thank you for bringing this petition, reading the petition, in accordance with our standing orders. And Mr. Speaker, you are right, every Kenyan has a right to. But Mr. Speaker, I have some history, and I'm sure Honorable Bandi and Honorable Kimunya will agree with me. This matter came in the 10th parliament, when we were in the old chamber, where the Senate is. And I remember the chorus was, people must go back to school. Mr. Speaker, that time, the number of people who didn't have degree were many, and they were in the cabinet. Speaker, I don't want to name them. There were many in the cabinet of President Uhuru Kenyatta and Honorable Raila Odinga. So what happened when the House passed it, President Kibaki used his uh, veto power in accordance with Article 115 of the Constitution, and he overturned the decision of the House. Then in the 11th Parliament, Mr. Speaker, we had a very robust discussion, and we took into consideration uh, the concerns of our colleagues, and we said, until 2022, go back to school, go back to the university. And Mr. Speaker, COVID cannot be the reason. Today, you know what's happening? When even your wife chases you away, you use COVID as a reason. The universities are on, people are online. So Mr. Speaker, as you read, rightly read Article 99, sub Article 1 of the Constitution, it is a function of this House to enact an act of parliament. And the Speaker, there's this story of leaders are born, but leaders, when they are born, all of us, we didn't have any experience. We didn't have any qualification. We went to school. Some became doctors. Mr. Speaker, we cannot have people who have no basic education qualification to participate in the function of budget making process of this house. Mr. Speaker, we cannot have people who cannot, who don't have the required education qualification to interrogate the Auditor General's report of this house. We can't have people who have no qualification to bring bills and represent their people. So Mr. Speaker, we are taking our children to school. We can't, we can't educate our children. And then here we tell people you can come to the National Assembly or the Senate when you have no qualification. Mr. Speaker, I really want to urge the House that this time around, if they, if they failed in the 10th Parliament, and if they failed, and if I am one of them, I had a chance between 2017 to 2021 is four years. 
That is the four years you can take a degree, basic degree, bachelor's program. And the degree, in fact, the degree must be, must be verifiable and you must come with a transcript. You know? You cannot just come and not hundreds of degrees. There are people who have got, there are people in this house who are called doctors and they have got hundred degrees. That is not a degree. So you must have the transcripts. We must see your colleagues who are you did in the university. Your lecturers must be known. And Mr. Speaker, I want to urge the House that this petition must be dealt with in accordance with Article 99, Sabbatical 1. Me member for Ugenya. Honorable <laughs> Speaker, I didn't intend to speak on this one. But Mr. Speaker, Honorable Budwale has talked about it. You know, this same constitution that they are saying is, the, the law that they are saying is discriminative, talks about the president must have a degree, the governor must have a degree. And so we are just extending this to ensure that those who come to this house don't stay here for four years and don't say anything. Mr. Speaker, we have members in this house who go for five years and they claim to be working on the ground. Our first and foremost duty as members of the parliament is to debate in this chamber, to legislate and bring bills in this chamber, not work on the ground. In fact, sometimes I think that if, if in future we want to make this uh, parliament robust, then we take CDF away. So that members take time in this floor and so that we're able to debate as a people. Mr. Mr. Speaker, people talk about young MPs those days, like my Senator Orengo, Toby Manyara, Shikuku. They had no CDF. Mr. Speaker, but they spent their time on this floor, made their, their, their contribution on this floor, Mr. Speaker, and did so well for the country. But some here, we are spending so much time following CDF, how much money has come in, blah, blah, blah. So we don't play, pay attention. And, and that's why some, member, some, some members said that wacha wajalu, wacha wajalu wangue kizungu kwa gunge, as we work on the ground. It's not about Kizungu. It's about being able to interact with the tools that we're using in this house. Mr. Speaker, if someone has not gone to school, how will he use this iPad? Yes. How will he be able to log in and be able to even interact? Because you're supposed now to, to, to log into this system, go to house business, check reports, check what is in the, what's there before you're able to contribute. Mr. Speaker, if you can't do that, then what are, we are wasting people's time. Mr. Speaker, above all, if we are to respect the law, Mr. Speaker, then this time, this parliament will stand indicted if we, we interfere with this particular law. Because we have tried it so many times. This time around, Mr. Speaker, we must put our feet down and if there's any member in this house who thinks that he's going to convince others, we, more than 70% 70, 70 of members of this house now have degrees. More than 70%. So if you don't have, Mr. Speaker, this is the time to ensure that you get one. If you don't get one, then wait for 2027. <laughs> Otherwise, we cannot be keeping going back and forth, back and forth. Then members, Mr. Speaker, you ruled the other day here. Some members, instead of now engaging with the reports, they want to engage with the, they want to engage with the witnesses that have come before the committees because they have nothing useful, useful or useless to add to what is happening in the parliament. Speaker, so much as the petitions have a right to bring the petitions, Mr. Speaker, I want to request the committee concerned that let us not waste time on this matter. There are more serious businesses to be looked at. <laughs> IBC has not given us a report on how, how they want to do the elections the next one year. The Legal Affairs Committee, check for us. How prepared is IBC? Check for us. How prepared are we to do elections? Not these small things of degrees and what. Let those ones be done by the universities, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> it's not our business to start asking people to go to school when they very well know that the reason Kenyatta, the president, and Moi, and Kibaki and Uru has been spending so much money on education so that all, all our children are able to participate in national development. You can't do it in this age by claiming to be having national education. That's nowhere. All by your Muslims are speaker. So we want to ask the Legal Affairs Committee, this is a matter that doesn't require to spend a week. Let us give the petition as a report, the, the, the answer back the next week and look for better things, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Now, let's not um, debate it. Let's just, uh, just point sil silent features so that, uh, because I can see there are very many of you who have uh, comment, please. Very, one, two minutes, Honorable Kagogo Boen. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker, for giving me this opportunity to comment this issue, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, under Article 95, Mr. Speaker, the role 
of I am a graduate from Chomba Kenyatta University, Mr. Dwale. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it is impossible to have legislators here who are illiterate. You cannot, you know, legislate when you are illiterate. Mr. Speaker, at the same time, we have seen, Mr. Speaker, we have seen even in some cases where you have a law professor as a, as a governor and, uh, you know, uh, oversighted by illiterate MCAs. Mr. Speaker, this issue, we discussed it in the 11th Parliament, like the Honorable Duale said, Mr. Speaker, and this time we, we are not going to postpone again to 2027. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we need to deal this thing once and for all, Mr. Speaker, and we have, we make sure that we have members here who are able to interrogate members of the executive. We are able to, you know, interrogate the bills which are coming into this house, Mr. Speaker, and be a legislators of substance, Mr. Speaker. Member for Emuhaya. He's not, he's not, he's not ready. Member, member, member for Alego Usonga. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, for the avoidance of doubt, I, I am well schooled. I went to the university and, and, and many, many people in this house know that I went to school. But Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, the crisis in Kenya is not, a, is not about lack of academic papers. It's about lack of integrity. And there's no evidence that if you have many papers, then probably you have, you have more integrity than the others. It is very clear, Honorable Speaker, that many of us have gone to school and we have many papers. But when it comes to interrog interrogation and decision making, the education level does not apply and is never, uh, the, is never the yardstick. Uh, therefore, Honorable Speaker, I would like to say that uh, this House should not block Kenyan voters from electing where they want to elect. You can, you can, you can talk for yourself. I'm giving my, I'm giving my views. And therefore, Honorable Speaker, this petition, in my view, is, very, is, very, is rightfully before us. And let us give Kenya an opportunity to elect. I want to give an example, Honorable Speaker. There are many members in this House who do not have degrees. But they are, more, they are effective leaders than a lot of us who have degrees, who have papers. Therefore, I want, this, I want to say that let us, consider, let us consider, if we are solving a crisis of leadership in Kenya, let us look for what is our problem. Our problem is not academic papers. Our problem is people who lack integrity. People who have gone to school, but they can never make the issues that, that help Kenyans. And therefore, I want to say, Honorable Speaker, that in my view, this House must legislate and answer to the petitioner's request. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, but of course, uh, just to observe that uh, it was dictated by the Constitution such educational qualifications as shall be prescribed in an act of parliament. The act of parliament is the Elections Act 2011. In fact, it is number 11 of 2011. Just in case you may have doubts about uh, but it. That's what it does. So, so the parliament, the 10th parliament, was acting to implement the requirements of Article 99. So I don't know. It, 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 it Maybe we know. We might, it is not something that is um, found on the streets. Member for Endebes. Uh, th thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, you've just uh, said what I wanted to say. But for purposes of clarifications and also for on record, I'm a holder of a master's in general surgery. I'm a surgeon. So, Honorable Speaker, I think our constitution demands that this House legislates on the, on, on the qualifications for somebody to contest any position. And that is our constitutional requirement as a House. And therefore, in the, 11, in the 2011 Act, Election Act, it was legislated. And people have had 10 years knowing that this Act was going to, be, to come into force. Therefore, there is no question now for people to start saying, let's postpone again to 2027. I think it is wrong, and it's an abuse of the legislative power of this House. 
And if we will be able, if we'll be legislating to change that, it will be unconstitutional. Because changing the requirement, I think for those who are, who are lawyers here will tell us that is unconstitutional from my own understanding. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And of course, um, again, even as you do that, remember Article 261, through which um, there is a schedule about the laws that Parliament had to pass within specified periods. So this was one of them. So I don't mean, I mean, anyway, but one uh, about John Bundy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I would want to start by saying that uh, petitioners have a right to petition Parliament or petition National Assembly to consider any matter that would be of interest to the nation and interest to them. But Mr. Speaker, this law was passed in the 10th Parliament, as Honorable Duale did say. And I uh, remember the person who inserted that amendment, and I hope I'm not wrong on this, is the leader of majority, Amos Kimunya. And uh, it was passed when our colleagues, some of them who didn't have degrees then, were in the parliament and they didn't know we were passing. I want to give you the magnitude of the problem if you don't have a degree. I remember very clearly and vividly, we passed that amendment and those colleagues of ours who didn't have degrees then, one of them even approached me at the lobby and asked me, is it true that we have passed an amendment that is now going to bar anyone who doesn't have a degree from contesting? And Mr. Speaker, I told him yes, and he was shocked, and he was seated right inside parliament, Mr. Speaker. And that member of parliament is still in this house, Mr. Speaker. But I don't know whether he has a degree now. I don't want to say who he is. But Mr. Speaker, immediately thereafter, there was lobbying. And those members went to the president. I remember some of them approached my party leader, and they requested us to do something. Actually, one of the members of parliament who petitioned the president is now having a degree because that person is now a governor, Mr. Speaker. So it, there is enough time. There was enough time, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, immediately after 2017 election, I did speak to this matter at a public function, and it became a national debate. I told members of the county assemblies who didn't have a degree or who don't have a degree to go back to school in good time. And a, a demonstration was organized by some of my opponents and asked three areas, Nairobi, to demonstrate, women to demonstrate against me. I don't know how it turned out to be a women affair. Kisumu, they called me and told me, we are not going to demonstrate, but you have been asked to demonstrate against you, and Mombasa. Now, the Nairobi ones went and demonstrated against me. But I told them, I'm like Noah. I am making the ark. I'm telling you, ruin is coming. Please take cover. And you are not taking cover. Let's reach 2022 is when you will know that I was a prophet. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, that hour of reckoning has now come. Those MCAs who are saying Badi is abusing us, now you should know that Badi was, uh, was their friend. If you still don't have a degree, please, it is too bad for you because this house is hostile to any other extension from the way I look at it. My final comment, Mr. Speaker, how do you expect chair of a budget committee in a county <laughs> to be someone who doesn't have a degree like it is in Oma Bay County. I mean, surely, how? Let us be serious. You expect the chair of budget committee like Kanini Kega here, looking at budget estimates and membership of that committee has people who have not gone beyond standard seven, standard eight. Just because sometimes they are politically correct, let us retain this law as is so I want to uh, request the committee not to ever give this, thing, this, uh, uh, this petition a thought of proposing an amendment to the statute law. Instead, the report they should bring here is to affirm it and have those members who still don't have a degree. And Paul, we still have other positions where you can still serve this country very well. You can be appointed to some committees in the constituencies and uh, other th places. Mr. Speaker, this law must stand. Thank you. Leader Majority. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I, like my colleague, Honorable Badi, has said, it's obviously the, the right of every Kenyan to entertain whatever wishes they have uh, and to bring it here. But uh, as your relative said, we are obligated to prescribe under the new constitution. Within the new constitution, it introduced academic qualifications. Previously, the old constitution did not have that. Because the framers of the constitution determined that it was necessary to have a certain basic minimum educational qualification. And when I brought the amendment here during the 10th parliament, I remember we were sitting in the old chamber. And the matter became controversial. We even had a division. And people voted and signed in the lobby that they want a degree. And immediately after that, there was a delegation. And I remember I was summoned by the former president. What have you done? And I was being accused of all manner of things. I've rigged them out. I want to keep. But eventually, he said, now, much as you are prescribing at this point, uh, there's only a couple of months to the general election. It would look unfair that you're almost doing it to block people. But can we give people time to go to university? And I believe that's what happened now within the 11th parliament. People have been given time. Now, as the committee looks at this petition, I also want them to consider that following the enactment of that act, there are people who have invested their money and time to go to school because they now want to join parliamentary or county assembly leadership. If we then are seen that we make a law and then we reverse it so that the donkeys can catch up with the horses, we will never make a law that will be obeyed because people will not have the predictability that this law will hold into the future. They will actually think that we can always lobby for a law to be changed when we are not compliant. And I think that should not be the basis of this house. We cannot be legislating in vain. So what we would like to encourage them is uh, uh, let them go to school, let them think of 2027, and let them give an opportunity for those who have prepared themselves to participate in the 2022 elections in compliance with the existing law, but not now change the law to suit those who have failed to comply. Because, Mr. Speaker, it will be the same thing, the same argument could be extended. You must belong to a political party or declare yourself as an independent. Now, if we are to go back and start changing that, we're changing the law because some people have not joined a party, we will be making nonsense of the legal system that we have created to underpin our electoral system. And, uh, and I think this is uh, the fact that people could actually vote through a division and not even know what they were voting for until it was announced <laughs> at the news, at one o'clock news, it was announced that some people would be locked out. And that's when they started panicking that what law did we just pass? So it, it just tells you that the quality of debate, the quality of representation, the quality of oversight will be far much improved when people can stand in this house, read the documents, so that they don't have to keep asking me, do you have some moving notes? You know, because people should be able to read a committee report. People should be able to interrogate a bill and come and prosecute it here on the floor of the house so that they are not an extension of my thinking or an extension of Nobudwala's thinking or John Buddy's thinking. That is the kind of thing we need to enrich this house, even if for our respectability. And because we have endowed with a very progressive constitution that has set the pace for the rest of Africa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Now, Honorable Members, you know, there's only so much limited time for comments, but let me hear now from another segment of um, members. The, we don't know when the, the donkeys are going to catch up with the horses, but uh, what about Danita Gatti? 
uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, for giving this opportunity to the other agenda. Because, Mr. Speaker, we are speak is talking about something very important that is education. And, Mr. Speaker, allow me to really say that I do not support that petition simply because, Mr. Speaker, we have come a long way as a country in terms of education. Mr. Speaker, we just, the, the, the Minister for Finance just read the budget the other day and you saw the amount of money that was allocated to education, Mr. Speaker. So we will be making a mockery of education in this house if we can accept that someone can come into this dignified house without a degree, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you are aware that I am a very proud uh, uh, Ivy League graduate. I do happen to be an Ivy League graduate from Columbia University, USA, courtesy of the efforts of other people. And Mr. Speaker, many of us, the Honorable Joyce Emanikor, the Honorable Tekla Toom, the Honorable Senator Maura, we all went to the U.S. to pursue education. Mr. Speaker, we go extra miles to just get an education, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, when we, this House can actually agree to such a, a petition, Mr. Speaker, it would really make a mockery out of education. Mr. Speaker, next week, in the, in the month of, uh, of, of, of July, the, in London, Mr. Speaker, the G7 are currently talking about issues to do with the climate change, issues to do with education. We have a lot of money that we are financing, Mr. Speaker. The Free Primary Education Summit is coming up in London, where the G7 countries are putting together money to support education. Mr. Speaker, what, is the, what are we even talking about? We must have educated members of parliament in this house. Anybody who aspires to sit in this dignified house, Mr. Speaker, must have a basic degree to come to this house, Mr. Speaker. So we cannot, I don't even know, Mr. Speaker, why we're even discussing this, Mr. Speaker. And for the first time, I support IEBC to put a strict measure. People must go to school, Mr. Speaker. Leaders must go to school. Members of parliament must go to school. Why are we educating our children to do what, Mr. Speaker? And we are saying that you can go to parliament without a, 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 a degree. Mr. Speaker, please, that petition I don't support. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Article 119 is very clear in terms of petitions to this floor of the House. Mr. Speaker, the other day I was listening to some members on this floor of the House when the Auditor General reports are brought here and they use the word qualified. Qualified and unqualified. And I was shocked that you could not tell the difference. <laughs> and it's indeed important, Mr. Speaker, we do agree that people must go to school, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, this petition is at the right place. Mr. Speaker, under Article 118, there must be public participation. We are saying this, Mr. Speaker, because some circumstances have been unique in this country, Mr. Speaker. How I wish that the Committee of Justice will do the proper work so that we get that report, Mr. Speaker, so that we'll be able to know what action to take. Mr. Speaker, we've had great leaders, like Winston Churchill. He never had a degree, Mr. Speaker, but he was such a wonderful leader, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'm humbly requesting. I know it was different century, Mr. Speaker, but what we are trying to put across is this. I know some members are saying, who have been my students at the university, Mr. Speaker? Eh? Mr. Speaker, the issue is this. We are not saying, in fact, during BBI, Mr. Speaker, we were in Kakamega, and members of the counter assembly, they wanted to lock down because they thought, Mr. Speaker, that the issue of the degree was in the BBI. We had to tell them that it was in the Elections Act, Mr. Speaker. And I want to say this. I was given a responsibility, Mr. Speaker, by the count assemblies, that I should bring an amendment on that law, Mr. Speaker. And I told them, I'm a messenger. Just listen, Mr. Speaker. Please. Yes. And I drafted this on your, it's on your desk, Mr. Speaker. And I'm happy the petition has come. Because this matter, they'll try to expedite. So that when time comes on this floor of the House, we'll be able to debate. But in some unique circumstances, if Corona contributed, Mr. Speaker, let's give a listening so that we'll be able to know. Leadership is not only about academic qualification, Mr. Speaker. I do agree. Yes, it's been a challenge. Even members here, when you were discussing about the budget, they were asking. But some have made an effort of going to school. When you go to school, Mr. Speaker, if you didn't qualify to go to university, you must start with a certificate. I know members who went through a certificate, Mr. Speaker, now they've done a diploma. And it's a longer process. So from the diploma, is when we'll be allowed to do a degree. If such circumstances are there, Mr. Speaker, we can give a leeway and extend to 2027, Mr. Speaker, if it's going to allow, Mr. Speaker. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs>
Thank you, Speaker, for this opportunity. Uh, I, was raising, I was raising on a point of order, Honorable Speaker, because my friend and, uh, and, uh, and uh, doc, Dr. Wamalwa, uh, while he was speaking, he had lowered his mask to a level where he, is, uh, he's, uh, he, was, he was not really covering his mouth nor his, uh, his nose. Honorable Speaker, we know that uh, this uh, COVID is very serious in this country at this time. I think that it behooves all members of, uh, of this House to take it seriously and kindly just wear your mask properly. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't uh, reduce you from, uh, from uh, saying what you want to say, but uh, just wear this mask. It might protect somebody. It, you never know. But let us keep this mask properly worn all the time while we are in this House. And uh, having said that, Honorable Speaker, because you gave me this chance, I think it is important that uh, we uphold this law. If people are going to come to debate in this House, let them come properly armed. They have had sufficient time. The Constitution requires it. The law requires it. Let those who are ready go out and come out to this House after they're elected within the stipulations of the Elections Act. And it requires a degree to come to this House. So be it. Member for North Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to uh, join my colleagues really in, in uh, making a statement about uh, this petition. Mr. Speaker, sir, as my colleagues have said, clearly leadership demands some level of skills. Mr. Speaker, sir, the law is very clear. Even in the Constitution, it's required that the President, the, the Governor, and the deputies have degrees. And it's required even for the rest of the elected uh, members, whether at the National Assembly or um, at the county level, they have some level of education. So, Speaker, I was in, I was in 10 Parliament with Honorable Duale and others, and this was an issue. We passed the law, but there's so many members who lacked the degree at that time, quite a number, and they petitioned the President successfully. And we had to come back in 11th Parliament and we passed the law. People were given five years to go and prepare themselves if they want to continue to be members of this house or at the county level. The speaker, sir, it requires us to really undertake the responsibilities that come with our positions in this house. So, speaker, there is no way without a degree you can oversee a minister who is armed with the doctorate degree. Peers and others, likewise. There's no way, there's no way you can interrogate a budget of three, three trillion shillings. So, Speaker, sir, you can even not do, cannot even do good summation. So, Speaker, sir, it demands that we have those skills. And for us to really um, be able to uh, undertake our functions of oversight, of representation, of um, uh, um, lawmaking, and even, Mr. Speaker, sir, to be able to determine and make a decision on issues of national concern to this nation, we need those requirements. I strongly support that members have a degree at all levels. I even wish maybe for members of parliament, it should be a master's degree, not even the first degree. Well, honor members, maybe, you know, it's not, it's, it was just comment that, you know, we are limited by what the time we have to, to have for, the, for that. But just, of course, to appreciate, uh, before I give the last, part, the last member to comment on this, to, to know that you've had the, the petition says that this requirement is discriminatory. But uh, I don't know, in that case then, uh, is it to say that the Constitution has created discrimination in requiring presidents and governors to have uh, <laughs> university degrees? Is it, is it at CECs? So is it to say that then, uh, th that, because if, they, if this is discriminatory, then it means that you must go back to the Constitution and overload it, overhaul it and say you need uh, farmers. I mean, uh, I mean, Honorable Lagwa Luoch. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I, I want to go back in history a little. Honorable Judge Uganya, Honorable Duale, Honorable Kimunya, Honorable Duale, uh, Badi, mm -hmm. while we did the 10th Parliament when we were debating this. Mr. Speaker, then it was very controversial, but we all agreed that we have that in the law. At that time, Mr. Speaker, there were members of this House who were in the Cabinet 
who did not have degrees. There were some who were backbenchers like us, but were very close to state house. As soon as we passed the law, and like Buddy said, they, they were not even aware we were discussing it. But when they realized that it had been passed, they lobbied and they actually went to see His Excellency President Mwai Kibaki. And that is when now Rukimunya was asked to say what happened in Parliament. Since then, when His Excellency President Kibaki refused to assent to the law, up to now it's 10 years. It was very clear when it was sent, that provision would take effect in 2022. It has been 10 years since. If anybody was serious about getting a university degree, they would do it. The speaker, what I see in that petition is, even if you have a driving license, you can qualify to come here. <laughs> and I'm glad, Mr. Speaker, I'm glad that you have given the house guidance. You have guided the house on the constitutional bedrock of what we have in the law. And, and it makes me happy that as members are discussing this in the plenary, my chairman, Hon. Muturi Kigano, is seriously making notes and listening. Because when it comes to the committee where I have the privilege of serving, we are going to look at the views that have been expressed by these members. We are going to go back to the Hansard also and look at why do we, we are not provisioned in the law. But as I stand, from where I stand now, Mr. Speaker, I can tell the House, and as a lawyer too, that that provision in the law is not unconstitutional. If it were, then even the provision as to age could be said to be unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. But as Kenyans, the provisioners have the right to bring this to our attention. But I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, as a member of the Justice and Legal Affairs Committee, this matter should not be allowed to, be, to go through. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honourable members, I remember also the Salaries and Remuneration Commission placed members of parliament where they did because it was saying that there is no requirement, for, there is no educational requirement for to you to become a member. You can come from the village and yes, uh, because you are able to mobilize uh, clans people and they, they bring you here. That's how, that's how, member, that's how the Salaries and Remuneration Commission determine that, uh, no, this job which doesn't have any, any qualification, you put them in number 43 or 47 or thereabouts. And, uh, so, so indeed, I think uh, the point raised, I think some of you have raised, even the, even the members of county assemblies must also take cognizance of those uh, views expressed by the SRC in placing them where they place them. Is on that one, one of the reasons was, you know, this one, you just walk in. As long as villagers and your clan men, clan women, and they, they come singing, and then they, they, they carry you into parliament. And, uh, you know, I mean, so, Honorable Maure, you want to, you want to, to have the last uh, bite of the cherry? Mr. Speaker, I, I want to also bring my sentiment to this one and actually my emphasis is if you find the way the leaders have been elevated in the recent times there should be never an excuse of taking elders to the county assembly or to parliament but they should be people who are prepared and purified through education so that we don't have the chaos like we are having in the county assemblies the money that is sent there, nobody is able to account because the majority they are just waiting to be told fanya hi to fiche hi hapa until you find a, a, a situation. Even it is in the county assembly or even in the national assembly, people have no idea what is happening. So I want to agree, Mr. Speaker, the issue of degrees and from a qualified university, as the Honorable Dwale put it, we just don't want somebody to come and ranch and come with the printed papers to say that they have a degree when you will follow around. You don't know who their classmates with their world, or you don't know which university is that. So, Mr. Speaker, this uh, committee by Honorable Kigano should save this country by not allowing a bill on this one. Well, now, uh, from the education sector, the Honorable Omboko Milemba, who are there? Thank you, Honorable Speaker, for being kind. I, I lost my opportunity. I'll be very brief. 
from the perspective of, uh, of workers, you know, every job must have a job description. And then the job description is the one that leads to creation of titles and creation of job levels, which leads to ranking in form of job evaluation. So when, speaker, you find yourself in trouble a lot sometimes with SRC, you've just spoken on it, on issues that concern members of parliament, is because there's no job description. So this is a law that's actually trying to bring a level and job description for members of parliament so that the ranking can be uh, known and can be in a bracket that is sure that is really known. And that will be good not only for the House, but everybody else who will be in the House. Finally, Honorable Speaker, on education, usually there's need to encourage the society. You do this by encouraging the young ones. If we make it that coming to Parliament, you can come without any certain uh, job description, then the youthful people in school will not find mentorship in us. And for that reason alone, there's really need to put a JD for people who are coming to Parliament. And finally, Honorable Speaker, the education has been expanded. There's online for uh, studies for everyone. And indeed, anybody can get the degree from, the, from, from where he is, from the comfort of his home. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Very well. And I believe uh, in the process, we also know that, um, you know, as we go all over, everybody calling you, or even people are greeting you, and they say, oh, who, are, who are you? I'm honorable. <laughs> how, how do you honor yourself? Your name cannot be honorable. You are yourself, let others, you are honored by others. But, but it's, you know, these things, I think, let's, let's try to, to educate one another, including those others, those many honorables out there who want to honor themselves before they are honored by the society. Well, let the, the petition be committed to the departmental committee on justice and legal affairs. The chair has been listening. I'm sure he will give it, he will give it a pro due consideration. Next order. Order number five, papers. Lead of majority. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, uh, Tuesday, uh, June 15th, in the afternoon sitting. Uh, one, a list of nominees to the National Government Constituency Development Fund committees. Number two, the reports of the Auditor General and financial statements of the Management and Supervision Fund for trade uh, for the years ended that is June 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020, and the certificates uh, therein. Number three, the report of the Auditor General and financial statements of the Moya Irrigation Development Project for the year ended 30th of June 2020, and the certificate therein. Number four, the reports of the Auditor General and financial statements in respect to the following institutions for the year ended 30th of June 2020 and the certificates therein. A, the State Department for National Government Affirmative Action Fund. B, the State Department for Wales Fund Oversight Board. Number C, the Youth Enterprise Development Fund. Number D, the State Department for Crop Development. Number E, the Agricultural Information Resource Center. Number F, the Strategic Food Reserve Trust Fund. And lastly, number G, the State Department for Livestock. Thank you. Honorable Speaker. Chairperson, Budget Appropriations Committee. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following paper on the table of the House today, Tuesday, June 15th, 2021, afternoon session. That is the report of the Budget and Appropriations Committee on its consideration of the county allocation of Revenue Bill 2021. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Order number seven, questions and statements. First segment, questions. Honorable questions, member for Igembe South, Honorable John Paul Mwirigi. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise to ask question number 184 of 2021 to the Cabinet Secretary for Land and Physical Planning. 
Question one. Could the cabinet secretary explain why there have been multiple demarcations of land described as Amgenti B, subsection C, D in Yegembe South Subcounty since 1992 to date, with each demarcation giving different land registration, LR numbers, thereby creating confusion, suspicious, and conflict. Question number two. Could the cabinet secretary indicate when the title deeds for the same parcels of land will be issued? Question number three. Could the cabinet secretary also take the disciplinary action against land officers working at the land offices in Kanoni Tumtumu area of Igembe South Subcounty who have been overcharging members of the public for land demarcation services to ensure that the vice is stopped forthwith, including effecting transfers of any officers who have overstayed at the station. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. The question will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Lands. Next question by, is by the member for Saboti, the Honorable Kale Bamisi, who has written to request that uh, the question be asked on his behalf by the member for Alego Usonga, the Honorable Atandi. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask question 186 of 2021 on behalf of the member for Saboti. Uh, part one, sorry, the question is addressed to the Cabinet Secretary uh, for Health. Part one, could the Cabinet Secretary explain why the National Hospital Insurance Fund is yet to remit over 3 million Kenya shillings or to St. Raphael Dispensary in Matisse Village in Saboti constituency as NHIF claims despite the facility having filed the claims correctly and on time, which has caused the facility, facility to shut down operations owing to its inability to pay salaries and procure essential medical su suppliers, supplies. Two, could the Cabinet Secretary also explain the measures the government has put in place to ensure that NHI funding is remitted to health facilities without unnecessary delays so as to protect health facilities from closure. But three, could the cabinet secretary ex also provide the implementation status of the Linda, Linda Mama program under the NHIF since its commencement, including the amount spent and its impact so far? Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Will be replied. Sorry. The question will be replied to before the Departmental Committee on Health. The last question is by the member for Syria, the Honorable Major Retired John Waluke. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I rise to ask question number 187 uh, to the Cabinet Secretary. I direct the, the question to the Cabinet Secretary uh, for livestock, agriculture, livestock, and uh, fisheries. One, what incentives has the government provided to the farmers to enable them to take advantage of opportunities for free market access created by countries such as South Korea for export of farm produce, including green bananas and procol, where the two crops are on high demand. Two, what steps has the ministry taken to ensure that farmers throughout the country are able to access quality standardization and other requirements for agricultural produce to access the export market. Three, could the cabinet, could the ministry consider undertaking a survey and registration of all farmers whose produce is viable for the export market with a view to empowering and facilitating them 
accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. A question will be replied to before the Department of Committee on Agriculture and uh, Livestock. Next segment, request for statement. On the first one, the first request is by the member from Vita, Honorable Abdul Swamant. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. I uh, beg to speak in English, Mr. Speaker, uh, so, so that my leader can know that I'm educated enough. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, pursuant to the provisions of Standing Order 442C, I seek to request a statement from the Chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education regarding Renewal of Teachers' Collective Bargaining Agreement, CBA. Honorable Speaker, the current Collective Bargaining Agreement between the Teachers' Service Commission and teachers across the country is set to expire in a matter of weeks thereby creating unwarranted anxiety amongst teachers. Already, Honorable Speaker, the Kenya National Union of Teachers, as well as the Salary and Reviews and Remuneration Commission, have already submitted their respective CBA proposals, but the TSC is yet to forward any proposal from its end. Honorable Speaker, it is therefore on this account of the formation concern that I seek for a statement from the chairperson of the Departmental Committee on Education and Research on the following. Within which specific timelines is the TSC planning to submit its CBA proposals for teachers in order to renew the current CBA that is about to expire? And secondly, Mr. Speaker, how many NAT members have either not been promoted or have not received salary increments as per the existing collective bargaining agreement. I thank you, Honorable Speaker, the very much educated Abdul Somad Sharif Nasir. I suppose uh, the Honorable Abdul Somad, uh, the, the, your request is not for a written answer. It's uh, to be, uh, to be the, the, the answer to be brought to the chamber. Very well. Chair Education, how long do you think you're going to do that? The Honorable Florence Mutua? Can you, can, you have, can you put your card in? What number? Number on the seat? That appears to be your regular position. No, that one is on. That one is on. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, that is a, a very key question because the current CBA is coming to an end, end of this month. It's been a big concern also for the members of uh, my committee. We have raised that issue, and I even met Madam Nancy this morning, and she said she'll look into it urgently. So we are also expecting a response as soon as possible. In the because course of this week? We have or? to have something for the teachers by the end of the month. But, but when, when do you think you can come up with the, the answer? Because Next the, week, Mr. the allegation is that uh, they haven't provided they haven't uh, provide, um, um, counter proposal to what uh, the teachers' union have uh, presented. That's what I went to ask also, Madam Nancy, this morning, and uh, we are also expecting an answer the earliest. So, in a week, Mr. Speaker, we also need an answer. In a week's time. As a committee, yes. Yeah, this is the uh, instructions from Parliament. Yes, thank you. Yes. Very well, Honorable Abusamad, one week's time. Uh, next uh, segment, response. The Chairman, uh, Energy Committee. Member of Onakuru East. Honorable Gekaria. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, first of all, Honorable Speaker, I wish to register my apologies uh, for not having been there 
uh, last week. Uh, Neither was my vice. I sincerely apologize for our absence, Honorable Speaker. Uh, but as it, uh, as it is, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Duale, it's true, did on the 10th, uh, uh, just the other day, he rose on, on 10th June 2021, he rose on a point of order to request the statement. Honorable Speaker, I have this statement which I, I wish to, to read. Honorable Speaker, we've had uh, three meetings. Uh, one of which uh, uh, was postponed because the ministry was unable to attend, and the other two, but the last one where Honorable Duole had another engagement with the Committee on Administration and National Security, the response was availed to him in writing. But Honorable Speaker, I have read, and Honorable Duole is not satisfied with two of the six issues that he had raised. So, Honorable Speaker, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, the pursuant, after Honorable Duale had uh, requested, the response from the Cabinet Secretary uh, is as follows, uh, attached. Honorable Speaker, uh, after that, President Uhuru Mwai Uhuru Kenyatta threw a special gazette notice of 3076 published on the 29th March 2021 appointed a task force primarily assigned with the undertaking a comprehensive review and analysis of all power purchase agreements PPA entered into between various independent power producers IPPs and the Kenya Power and Lighting Company Limited uh, that is the task force. The constitution of the task force by the president follows the revocation of a standing committee appointed by the cabinet secretary, Ministry of Energy, to undertake a similar exercise through a special gazette notice 2219, published on the 15th March 2021. Notably, the mandate of the standing committee in the revoked notice uh, was centered on the renegotiation of the PPS, whereas the mandate of the task force in the Gazette notice has been extended to include termination of the PPS and any other appropriate action the task force deems fit as recommendation options. The committee is therefore in its meeting held on the 15th April requested the Ministry of Energy to table a, a report. Honorable Speaker, uh, this is what the ministry did give. Uh, on account of this undertaking that, uh, that threatens the long-term growth of our country, that I seek a statement, sorry, One of the issues that Honorable Duale, sorry, Honorable Speaker, that these power producers each individually enter into their power purchase agreements, PPA with KPLC, who buys the power from them directly. Question number one that Honorable uh, Oduale had thought is uh, at what rate does Kenjen supply elect electric power to Kenya Power? Honorable Speaker, Kenjen is currently the largest power producer in Kenya with several power plants located across the country. The power plants are, uh, come into different sources of power ranging from hydro, geothermal, wind, and thermal. KPLC pays Kenjen for energy delivered, fuel used in generation, and capacity charge for each power purchase agreement as shown on the table below. Honorable Speaker, the list is a little bit too long, and uh, maybe because Honorable Dwale uh, uh, might be able, because he had seen the statement. Have you a copy of the statement? Yes, I think he has gotten a copy of the statement. Oh, you have a copy? Yes. Okay. Very so well. these are the... So, but on, on two, uh, the second question was, at what rate does Kenya Power procure electric power from independent power producer? 
KPLC pays IPPs for energy delivered, fuel used in generation capacity, charges for each power purchase agreement are shown below for 2019-2020. Again, Honorable Dwale has that, and this was only specifically for the financial year 2019-2020, which uh, it is various, which, which Honorable Dwale has. From the it, it is in kilowatt hours uh, and the charges, which is almost six six billion three hundred and four million six five eighty seven thousand one or five shillings. Question number three: What is the basis of the huge difference between rates charged by Kenjen and the rates charged by IPPs? The difference: the different power plants are priced differently, depending on various factors a major one being the source of power. Kenjen also has different prices for its power plants, some being higher or lower than other IPPs. Question number four, that I, I do agree now with Honorable Duale when he says when he rose last week uh, requesting and he was not satisfied and we totally, because again this is something, it is could the chairperson provide a list of IPP including their shareholders, directors, and addresses. Honorable Speaker, the list that is given here is only of some 19 IPPs with no names for directors, no addresses, and no shareholders. And this is where Duale, I totally agree, and we totally agree with him as a committee, that uh, this information as sought by Duale was not given as he had sought that information. And of course, Honorable, Honorable Speaker, as a committee, we have been raising these issues. Uh, and uh, when uh, Pukose was a vice chair, he remembers. And some of these past and present at the ministry uh, are purported, or it is alleged they are part And maybe that is the reason why they don't want to give these things. But again, we will be demanding as a committee for at full disclosure, as requested, because as a committee, when we ask, and this information we have been asking, and uh, the committee uh, is privy to this information, and it has not been brought even to our committee. But now we will, as a committee, demand, as requested by Duale, that this information must be provided. Five, how much money has <coughs> been paid to each of the IPPs by KPLC and other Ministry of Energy since commencement of their respective contracts with the government of Kenya and KPLC. Honorable Speaker, the response is that some of these contracts range between, uh, back over 25 years. More time will therefore be required to extract and consolidate this data for submission. Honorable Speaker, as, as again uh, uh, requested by Honorable Duale, down almost three months down the line, it is not appropriate to have this kind of an answer. So we, again as a committee, honorable speaker, we will be requesting your indulgence in terms of giving us more, maybe another extra one week so that we can be able to go and uh, be able to request the ministry to be able to furnish uh, this uh, very important uh, 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 request that was asked by honorable Duale. The last one is what urgent measures is Kenya Power taking to reduce the cost of electricity to households, businesses, factories, and other consumers with a view to support the government big four agenda, to enhance, especially enhancing manufacturing. And the answer is that uh, renegotiation of existing PPS for existing power plants. B, time of use time of use tariffs for large commercial and industrial uh, customers. C, lifeline tariffs for small and medium-sized enterprises. D, on dispatch basis during operations, priority is given to renewable generation sources to meet demand while reducing thermal generation. And lastly, uh, that is E, 132 KVA and 2, two it should be 220 KVA tariffs. Those are the, the responses that were given by, uh, by the, uh, and of course the response was signed by the Cabinet Secretary, uh, Minister of Energy. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Duele.
Mr. Speaker, I, I need your guidance on this matter because I've asked for six questions. And this matter, Mr. Speaker, is a matter of public interest. Yes. And it concerns the high prices Kenyans pay for electricity. Mr. Speaker, my interest was the independent power producers. And I have been given a list of 19 independent power producers, which I have one independent power producer is more like a government one, Electricana uh, Wind Power. But Mr. Speaker, all these power producers, Savo Power, Rabai Power, Imentiti Hydro, Thika Power, Gikaria, Gulf Power, name it, I Iba Africa, Mumia Shua Company. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, because this is a matter of public interest, this committee I have done a good job. But Mr. Speaker, government and that more so the Ministry of Energy have refused to answer two important questions. And Mr. Speaker, under Article 117 on the powers and privilege given to Parliament and its committees, and even the leader of majority and the leader of minority, if you read 117, and Article 35 of the Constitution on access to information and the Powers and Privilege Act. Mr. Speaker, this committee, for the first time, have been denied two important uh, uh, questions. One, the directors and the shareholders of, the, of these 18 independent power producers. And Mr. Speaker, I want to confirm that these directors and shareholders are big people some of them in government and some of them in the energy sector. Two, Mr. Speaker, I have asked for the contractual obligation that they have entered with the, with the KPLC. The, 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 the chair has been denied the last three months. That, and in fact, the answer, Mr. Speaker, he says that I should go to a court of law and get an order as a member for Garissa Township so that those answers can be availed to me. Mr. Speaker, before you give direction, I want to say it without fear of contradiction that in 2019, so that they can hear us, KPLC spent 15 times more to buy power from the independent power producers even compared to Kengen, which is a government entity. The Speaker, in that period, Kenjen, Kenjen was selling power to KPLC at 4.6 cent to the kilowatt hour. Mr. Speaker, I want to give you four companies out of these 19. Mr. Speaker, Kenjen sells to KPLC at four shilling, 4.6 of a cent per kilo per hour. Mr. Speaker, I'll give you four companies among these 19. Trump Power Generating Company, whose directors have been denied, sold to KPLC at 69.2 kilowatt hour. 15 times more expensive. Mr. Speaker, Gulf, Iba Africa, Power Tech Solutions, Salvo Power, sold to KPLC at 26.3, 16.9, 14.7, and 11.77, respectively, per kilowatt hour. So these independent power producers, Mr. Speaker, are the ones who are making Kenyans pay for power. And they are owned by people who mint billions. Mr. Speaker, I'll even give you an, a scenario. In, according to KPLC, Power, electricity power generating agreement they have signed with these companies. In 2018, KPLC spent 64 billion to buy 10.79 billion kilowatt per hour from these companies and Kenjen. Kenjen produced 10, uh, about 60% of that. These other companies took away close to 29 billion, and it's in the document. 29 billion. But Mr. Speaker, one thing that Kenyans don't know, and I want the Minister of Energy to tell me, under this power, power purchase agreement, 
that we have in this country, there is a component called capacity charges. And the member for game, you know, started from a very lower rank in KPLC. You know, those who climb the, 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 the poles until he became a big man. So he understands what I'm talking about. There's something called component of capacity charges, where KPLC pays the independent power producers even when they are not generating. These power producers, even if they don't generate, they don't sell to KPLC, they earn billions of shillings in the name of capacity charges. These charges are transferred to the ordinary bills of the Kenyan citizens. So, Speaker, under this administration, under President Hulkett's administration, this government opened so many geothermal, even solar projects, the biggest solar project in East and Central Africa is in my constituency, Gaza Solar Project, which is pumping 55 megawatts to the national grid. We have got geothermal, we have Turkana. Mr. Speaker, over the years, these, these independent power producers, have, they have just gen generators, they are not even selling, and they are earning at least capacity charges. Mr. Speaker, I want you to indulge me and this House that you order this committee and even ask for an inquiry that we want to know the actual faces behind these 18 companies. Who are the owners? Who are the directors? Who are, who, 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 who are stealing from Kenyans through these exorbitant power prices? Two, Mr. Speaker, we really want to ask you to order the Minister of Energy to table before the committee the constructional obligation. Every contract and contract must have a period. Mr. Speaker, we want to know if Honorable Duale is the owner of Gulf Energy, if Honorable Duale is the owner of Savo. Speaker, we know, I mean, they are listed. Some of these companies are listed. Speaker, the committee of this House cannot be told, go tell Honorable Duale to go to court, get a court order for him to know the, the, the questions I've asked him is. So, Mr. Speaker, this is a serious matter. Yes. Speaker, this is a serious matter. It's just like, it's just like the anglo leasing when in the ninth parliament, Honorable Malcolm Moore raised it. So, Mr. Speaker, we want to protect public interest yes. from few individual companies. Yes. The capacity of Kenjen, Kenjen can provide, can provide enough power to KPLC. Why do we engage? These companies were, were, were brought on board, Mr. Speaker, in 2001 during the drought when we had a shortage. But today we have enough power. Kenjen can supply. Why are we denying Kenjen the power uh, the, 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 to supply us power at 4.6 shillings? And we are allowing other people to supply at 69, at 26, uh, 17, 11. We have power. So, Mr. Speaker, I think I'm, we're helping government. We need to know, you need to direct the speaker that this house is furnished with the directors and shareholders, the contracts and the price since 2001, so that this house, a committee of this house, can bring this matter to rest, Mr. Speaker. And I'm not going to quote Mr. Speaker. Under Article 117, I enjoy privilege, powers and freedom of, of expression and thought to represent not only the people of Garissa Township, but even the greater people of Kenya. Yeah. Speaker, this answer is unsatisfactory. Yeah. Deliberately, question four and five have been denied because some people want to hide certain faces. So, Speaker, help us. Use, help us through your powers to unmask these shareholders and these directors and let us have the contracts. No. Well, I can say there are a few interventions, but uh, on our members, I think uh, there will be no need of us. Uh, uh, the member for game may, may want to put in his, uh, his uh, specific knowledge, but please, not now. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me give directions. The issues raised by the Honorable Duale are indeed of uh, great moment, and uh, they really go to the core of um, some of the key issues that we talk, we keep addressing. We talk about the big four and the component of manufacturing is there. We will not achieve it as long as uh, some of the issues that uh, Honorable Duale is raising are not addressed. And therefore, I know uh, Honorable Gekaria, you as a departmental committee, but now you will have to convert yourself to do an inquiry. 
with all the powers to summon, call to call before you, and if they fail to report here, and we will show you how we will drag them into the place. All the pe all the people involved, pe whoever it is, starting from the cabinet secretary in the ministry, uh, his peers, and whomever whomever it is that you you as a committee choose to invite. Those, uh, those, those um, mem members from the Kenya Power, mem Kenya Power. The story about uh, the response about the Honourable Dwale going to court will not, we will not allow it. Not, not under my watch. The member of Parliament is entitled to an answer, a satisfactory answer. It also, invite the registrar of, the, of uh, companies. These days, there is even the issue of beneficial ownership. Let them come with all the CR12s of all of them. And if they don't bring, then you know that they are, they are phony. You know, they, they, they must bring all the CR12. The registrar must bring before you. In fact, that process is uh, ongoing, and the other day, there were, there were being, people were, Kenyans were being uh, praised for having uh, complied uh, in, the, in, you know, in great numbers with the requirement for beneficial ownership. So get the CR12, so that uh, then the, answer, the answers which you'll bring, you'll bring now as a report, Honorable Gikaria, not now the statement from the ministry. So you will now be the ones now to bring the report, and on the day you are inviting them, invite the Honourable Duale. So, so, so another interested members like the member for Endebes, uh, and they, and maybe the member for for Game, is it? And the member for Kwanzaa, I can see his hand up. And then the other member in who, who may who desires to go and hear, because this matter affects everybody in the country. It, it's, it's an important matter that uh, the committee should really inquire into. Now it's not a, a matter of being given a written statement perfunctorily. No. You, 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 you will now inquire into that. Go into, the, into whatever the length and depth to find out uh, issues that the Honorable Duale has raised, which now at least you have got the, a, a, a starting point. You get the hands up, the issues that the Honorable Duale has raised. And also, let in every contract with the IPPs indicate when it was first entered into. Was it for eternity? Because you know there's a language being used now in the judiciary about eternal, eternal clauses. Is it, are these agreed contracts for, <laughs> for eternity also? Uh, so that uh, you know, we, <laughs> we, may, we may know. Do they have an expiry date? Even if, uh, even if Kenyans have uh, so much sun, uh, surely, uh, it's so much sun today, and there's a lot of power, cheaper power. Why do we continue having such expensive uh, arrangements, contractual arrangements? Because, I mean, there, there, must, be, there, there must be, there must be some, some point at which some of them may, may, have, may have to exit the scene. So, Honorable Gikaria, your committee, take some little bit of time in, and call everybody who is in the, in the whole chain, from Kenjin, from Kenya Power, from the ministry, from the registrar of uh, companies, and any other body that you, you may be think that may have uh, any information to profile so that you table a report here which the entire house can uh, debate, either resolve in a one way or the other. So in your report, you should also seek to make recommendations as to what the house, the, the route, the direction the house should take. So I don't, I don't think we, need, we don't need to, de to debate it uh, further. I think that's, that should be sufficient, unless you think there's another issue. Honorable Speaker, I want to thank you uh, for your direction.
we uh, will engage the Secretariat uh, and uh, may hopefully immediately we'll be able to start an inquiry into this thing. And as a committee, you have also been uh, concerned, so much concerned. Uh, but also, Honorable Dwale, uh, through the intervention of the President after appointing the task force, it might unearth, and it gave them, I think, uh, six months to be able to have come up with, but that does not stop us uh, from being able to continue with what you have That's given. executive Thank driven. You. Okay. That, that, that one will not be brought here. So, okay, okay. We, what, what, you, what, you will find, what you find out, you bring it here. Ah, well. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I, yeah. I, I, yes. I, thank yes. you. Very well. Now, on this segment, there's uh, a, a general statement uh, by the leader of the minority party, the Honorable John Bundy. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I stand here indeed with uh, a very heavy, heavy heart to convey my condolences to the family relatives, friends, and of course, the great people of game constituency, and to pay tribute to a fallen hero who was also a very good friend of mine, a comrade, a political mentor, and a reliable stalwart and member of my party, the Orange Democratic Movement, the late Honorable Washington Yakoyo Midiwo. Mr. Speaker, even adding the article there, late, and following it with the late, it's very difficult for me to pronounce those words before the name Washington Yakoyo Midiwo. Mr. Speaker, I got to learn yesterday that Honorable Midiwo succumbed to a heart attack of course, at the age of 54 years. The Honorable Jakoyo, Mr. Speaker, was elected a member of parliament for the first time in 2002 to represent the people of Game constituency in the National Assembly. And Mr. Speaker, he served this, in this house continuously for three consecutive terms up to 2017. Honorable members who worked with the Honorable Jakoyo Midiu would remember him and would agree with me that he could be described with the following words, that he was astute debater, Jakoyo was courageous and charismatic leader, and I must add that he was a witty politician, he was forthright, very brave, and straightforward. I think if I use those words liberally to describe my fallen friend, I wouldn't be off the mark, Mr. Speaker. He was actually a dedicated and selfless leader who served his people with the dedication. The Honorable Jakoyo, Mr. Speaker, allow me first to move to a bit of his history, a summary of his history. He was born in 1966 and he officially joined politics in 2002 when he vied and won the game parliamentary seat on an ARC ticket. He went on to be re-elected to represent the same people of game for another two terms in 2007 and 2013 under the Orange Democratic Movement. During his time in this House, Mr. Speaker, we'll all remember that Midi was served in various House committees, but more particularly I want to single out the Departmental Committee on Finance and Trade. He also served in the Joint Committee on Parliamentary Broadcasting and Library. He also served in the House Business Committee by virtue of his position in the leadership of the House. He also served in the Departmental Committee on Defense and Foreign Relations, among others. May, uh, Mr. Speaker, Jakoyo, yeah, I'm being reminded also the catering which we call Member Services Committee today, Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Jakoyo Midiwo served as the ODM Chief Whip in this House from 2008, January 15th, to 2013. Later on, after uh, being re-elected again for the third time under the new Constitution, 
He served as the first deputy minority leader of the National Assembly of the Republic of Kenya. And we all will remember Jakoyo's contribution. He was sitting around here. Jakoyo was consistently uh, sitting on this row. But yesterday, Mr. Speaker, I think the sun did set and the clouds gathered and then we got the sad news of his demise, which was sudden. I will tell you it was truly sudden because on Friday, I had a conversation with the late Washington Jakoyo Mediwo, and we agreed with him that we would meet on Sunday evening to discuss issues of ODM. As a speaker on Saturday, I tried reaching Jakoyo. His phone was going through, but he didn't pick my calls. That was very unusual of Jakoyo Mediwo. Those who have been communicating with him know that his phone is always on. I, there's no single time I've ever tried to reach out to Jacoyo Medio and his phone is either off or he doesn't pick. If he doesn't pick, he calls you back almost immediately. But it was unusual this time. However, I didn't read much into it and I didn't expect the sad news of yesterday. But Mr. Speaker, we must accept that we are in a journey. All of us are heading where our departed friend has now uh, crossed over to. Allow me, Mr. Speaker, just to take a few minutes because I know many of my colleagues will make, uh, will also want to have opportunity to condole and share in their grief of the, de the death of our colleague. Let me just say a few things. I called Honorable Jacoyo Mediwo my political mentor, and indeed he was. I must confess that I've had two political mentors, and both of them are now the late. That is the late Gerald Lutino Kajuang, who started mentoring me into politics before I even came to parliament. And then Jacobo Mediwo, who immediately came in here, gave me opportunity and immediately uh, spotted some potential and put me very close to uh, introduce me to parliamentary procedures and allowed me space to grow. Mr. Speaker, Jacoyo was someone who, I must say, were, had no jealousy. He was not jealous. He would want you to grow as much as he grew politically. But also very, very open and candid and honest. There was a time, Mr. Speaker, after the death of the late Joshua Jode in a, a grisly accident, that his replacement was being discussed in the political corridor. And um, I remember meeting Jacoyo on the stairs, and he called me aside and told me, Mbadi, it is being said that you are to be appointed assistant minister, but I don't want it. He told me on my face, and I asked him why. He told me if Ababu Namwamba is crossing over to government side now, I mean government, becoming a member of the cabinet, how can I again lose you? Who is remaining on the, in the back bench? And I told him that you are not then thinking about my personal development. You are thinking about the party, but you are not thinking about my personal development. And immediately took about one minute just thinking about my statement and told me, I think I agree with you. So that is Jacoyo. Other people would go behind your back and start discussing how you should not be appointed. But he first reached out to me and told me, I don't think you should be appointed assistant minister. Now, Mr. Speaker, we have lost that such kind of a person. I want to just say my last re final remarks. Um, I want to quickly conclude that, Mr. Speaker, this is someone who really could trust you once he knows that you have some capacity and competence. I remember one time there was a report that came to this house through the Agriculture Committee, committee that was chaired then by John Mututo. And that report was really personalized attacks on the office of the Prime Minister. We sat with Jacoyo in the Prime Minister's office with the technical team, and we agreed that we bring amendments, the two of us. And he told me, buddy, go home, read. I'm also going to read. Tomorrow we converge and propose the amendment. Mr. Speaker, 
I, to, I read all the way to 3 a.m. coming out with these amendments. When I met Jacob the following morning, he told me, just laughed and told me, buddy, I knew you were going to read, and so just go ahead and propose those amendments. Mr. Speaker, when I came to the floor of the House, after my contribution, all the members of Parliament, including the Cabinet Ministers, agreed with me. And I think that is the first clear mark that I made on the floor of this House. That is how Jacoyo could trust you. I could go on and on. This is a member of, this is one person. Among my friends, there is no member of Parliament who has visited Suba South constituency like Jacoyo Mediu and did so many fundraisings for me as a chief guest. It is only his constituency and Rarieda constituency where my wife comes from, where I have visited outside Oma Bay County more than any other constituents in the Republic of Kenya. So, Mr. Speaker, I don't want to take all the time for my colleagues. It is indeed really a sad moment for all of us, all the members of parliament here, especially those who served in the last parliament and the other previous parliaments, will agree that we have lost someone who, even if he was not with you on the same side of the political divide, you could still interact, socialize, and a very, very genuine human being. I want to stop there because I profess the faith of Seventh-day Adventists. I will not say, may God rest his soul in eternal peace because we believe that is a judgment that's left to God. But he served this country, he lived this life. Thank you very much, I pray for the family. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, let, let's take, um, not, not too much, not, not too long per person, so, because I know there are many of us who would want to eulogize um, our good friend and uh, brother, the Honorable Washington Jacoyo Midiwo. Uh, I will start with the Deputy Speaker. I, I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, on behalf of my constituency, my family, and myself, I wish to give my heartfelt condolences to the family of Honorable Jacoyo Midiwo. Mr. Speaker, uh, I came to Parliament in 2002, and uh, Jacoyo had also just been elected as a first termer. Mr. Speaker, what uh, Honorable Bombardi did not say or he did not say it properly, is that Jacoyo was a good person with a very good heart, and a big heart. Mr. Speaker, when we came in 2002, because I want to be very brief, we were quite a lonely group of young Kanu members of parliament who had been thrashed. The party had been thrashed in the general election, and we were only 68. And Mr. Speaker, on the side of NAC, it was very difficult to interact with anybody that side the one who are in government. Because remember, NAC had just gotten to power. Many of them were fairly new to real power. And they were very uh, difficult and sometimes fairly arrogant, Mr. Speaker. The only person who across the aisle would be able to you know, interact with us without a problem was the Honorable Jacoyo Midiwo. And I remember one time, Mr. Speaker, we went to his constituency and actually put him into a lot of trouble. 14 members from Kanu, young members from Kanu party, visited his constituency and did a harambe for him. Because really, there was nobody else we could uh, interact with in government. We had been used to power, and we had no power no more, and therefore very lonely, and we could get, uh, and we went to his constituency. And I remember him being summoned and asked why he was behaving uh, in that manner with the people from the opposition. That story went on and on. He was an active member of the House. Other than being a good debater, he was also a footballer. Maybe not a very good footballer. But if you get anybody from Nyanza or Western, when they come to Parliament here, they would believe just because they are very good the other side. He was not a good footballer, but a very social footballer. We would interact very well when we go on trips with him. And Mr. Speaker, I've just said he was a good man. Lastly, I wanted to say something about him on a personal level. Many of these members of parliament have never lost elections, so they would not know how cold it is to be outside parliament when you lose an election. But I remember when I lost election in 2007, and I had nothing much to do. Jakayo, Jakoyo Midiwo picked me from somewhere and gave me an advice on what I could do and make my life useful during that uh, 
difficult period. And Mr. Speaker, I was not ready with all the papers that were required. And he personally, because he was a whip and had some control here and there, he was able to wait for me to do those things that I did. I will not say what it was then. But Mr. Speaker, part of what uh, sustained me outside this parliament for five years <laughs> is as a result of Honorable Jacoy Mediwa. And that is what I really wanted to stand and say. Really, if there was anything I could do to say thank you, I really want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart and to the family. We pray for them. For the, uh, well, for the family, we pray for them and the hope that uh, God will, you know, uh, well, let's not say be kind, the honorable, <laughs> honorable former majority leader says be kind. In, in, for us, we say our fariji, mioyoyao, familia. Now, then we can put that in English. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Member for game. Mr. Speaker, sir, I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity to send my message of condolence and that of the good people of game following the sudden and untimely demise of our former member of parliament, my friend and brother, Washington Jacob Mediu. As history would have it, at a conversation with Jacob Mediu on Friday at 6 p.m. And that conversation was around telling him sorry for the demise of his sister, elder sister Juliana. And I asked him, where do I send my donation? And he told me, just send the donation to me. Little did I know that that was the last time I would talk to my brother Jacob. No wonder the Bible says in Psalms 39 verse 4, Lord, show me my end. Lord, teach me that my life is like a phantom, that my life is just like air. I think the demise of Yakoya has taught me a few lessons of life. During, Mr. Speaker, sir, during the 15 years of his membership to this house, Yakoya exuded a sense of teamwork and a sense of bravery in articulating He'll be remembered as a man who dedicated himself to serving the people of game and a man who had fidelity to the truth. Mr. Speaker, sir, when he was in line of duty, Jacob ensured that he was indeed the man in the arena. His face mud with sweat and dust most of the time in attempts to ensure that we, the people of game, got what we deserved and what was rightfully ours. In his oversight role, he'll be remembered as a man who was brave when he was tackling on issues. In his representation role, we, the people of game, will remember him for standing for what was right for the people of game. Mr. Speaker, sir, the Honorable Jacob Mediwo, while serving as a deputy minority leader in this house, he helped consolidate the members of the position and led them as a so solid and shaken house that could hold the government to check. Mr. Speaker, the people of game will forever remember Washington Jacob, the Honorable Washington Jacob Mediwo for his transformation agenda and for the many projects that he used CDF to launch and, and to ensure that our students in school had good classes. Mr. Speaker, sir, on my personal encounter with my predecessor, I remember with a lot of nostalgia the many moments that we met with Yakoyo, and we joked about our competition. We thought that the competition was just like a football match between Gormaya and AFC. And after the match, Sometimes you lose, sometimes you win. And we kept our cool because we thought that we are all fighting for the beautiful constituency of game. The land that has, has the best of brains in this country. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me take this opportunity to convey sincere condolences to, my, to the family of Jacoyo and the entire people of game 
and the friends and the loved ones of Jakoyo for the loss that we have encountered in his demise. We wish to assure their family, the family of Jakoyo, that we are together with them in this and that we are praying for God's mercy and grace upon them during this difficult moment. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, I wish to request the honorable members to keep the family of our fallen brother and the people of game in prayers as we come to terms with the loss of the member of game who was a man that we'll never forget for the works, for his deliberations, for his brevity, and for investing in many of his friends. Jakoyo is one of those honorable members who spent time with the ordinary people at home. He invested in his network, and he had a huge network. I'll forever remember Washington Jakoyo Medio for his steadfastness, for being a true person. When he didn't like something, he said it as it were. And I remember for the last two years that he was talking in uh, funerals in game, and meeting people, he told them, game can only have one MP. It can only have two. And for that, I'll remember him for the rest of my life, and I will do anything possible to ensure that we give him a peaceful send-off. The Bible reminds me on Revelation 21, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Because the old one passed away, we look forward that when our day comes, We'll meet him in heaven. Thank you. Honorable, Honorable Wandai. Is your car, your car is not uh, showing? Honorable Speaker, okay, thank you very much. If you allow me to just uh, again remove my mask, because I'm referring to some notes on my phone. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, let me join my colleagues. Yeah, I've asked for permission from the Speaker to, to refer to my notes on my phone. But if you insist, I'll, I'll try to persevere. Okay. Uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, let me join my colleagues in... Uh, passing uh, my deep felt um, uh, condolences to the family of my friend uh, Jakoyo Midiwo. Mr. Speaker, I came to know Jakoyo Midiwo when he was serving his first term in this parliament. Mr. Speaker, at that time I was working for British American Tobacco and there was a project I was implementing in his constituency, a CSR project. And that's how I came to meet him, the speaker. And from that first encounter, I learned one or two things. One of which was that a member of parliament should not, should not just sit back and wait for the so-called development to be brought by the government. That a member of parliament must go out of his way to create networks. That was a very valuable lesson I learned from Honorable Jacoyo. So, Speaker, come 2013, when I was running to be member of parliament, Jacoyo stood by me from day one up to the last moment. And I remember very well at that time, I was still undertaking an assignment in Kampala, Mr. Speaker. And after, even after I had won nominations in ODM, in Ugunja, Mr. Speaker. And I came to Nairobi to look for my certificate of nomination from the party. It was delayed. So I went back to Kampala. And so when the certificate was ready, Jakoyo called me that I have a certificate with me. And I want you to come and pick it from me, lest somebody play mischief. So I had to fly away from, fly back from Entebbe to Nairobi and he gave me the certificate of myself and my MCAs. That is Jacoyo. Because he thought that if he didn't do so, he could create room for some mischief. 
The speaker in the 11th parliament, we as the code coalition, most of us, had wanted the Koyo to be the leader, leader of minority, Mr. Speaker, because we had seen the capacity in him. But of course, because of the, the dynamics of coalition, it, could, it didn't happen, and he became a deputy instead. But even as a deputy, Mr. Speaker, Jakoyo performed exemplarily well. It's for sure that Jakoyo's leadership was exemplary in this house. And it's a lesson for most of us who are new in this parliament, Mr. Speaker. Fast forward, as I conclude, Mr. Speaker. When Jakoyo lost the election of 2017, when Jakoyo did not make it back to this house in 2017. Mr. Speaker, I must confirm and confess that it is me among very other few people who remain close to him. And in fact, in the, the period between that time and now that he has left us, he has been to my constituency countless number of times countless number of times. I remember speaking to Jakoyo last on Saturday this last week, in the evening. I think one or two days before he passed on, on phone. Again about the demise of his sister, his elder sister. I didn't know that I would be speaking with him for the last time. But he was still very, very confident. As a man who was always sure of himself. Finally, Mr. Speaker, we all know that Jakoyo ran in 2017 election as an independent candidate in game. And when the elections were concluded, as I've said, I took it upon myself to initiate the process of bringing back Jakoyo to ODM in my other capacity in the party. And I must say I was successful in organizing his comeback and even a ceremony for him to be received back by bar at Chungwa House. Of course, an initiative that didn't please very many people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, to cut the story short, I want us to give our departed brother the most befitting send-off and to take home the lessons we have learned from his life as a politician and as a father and as a brother and as a son. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are very, very many people who have passed through this parliament and who will pass through this parliament, but will never leave the mark of the magnitude that Jacoyo has left. There are people who have been in this parliament even more times, more times, but they have not left the kind of legacy that Jacoyo has left. So may God Almighty rest his soul in eternal peace. Thank you. There is a problem, I think, around that area. There is a problem around that area. Oh, I got it here. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, with a very heavy heart, Mr. Speaker, I can't believe that I'm standing here this afternoon, evening, to talk about the Honorable Jacoyo Midio Aka Otada. Just speaking, the last campaign we used to call him Otada times four. The speaker, there is so saddening that he's now being called the late Jacoyo Midio. I believe that one day, even death will die. The speaker, Yakoi was so friendly, so honest, so fortunate, Mr. Speaker. As Mr. Speaker, in 2012, when I was running to be MP for Uganda, and he met me at the airport, and I was fighting that time with my current senator about whether I should be MP or not, because the, the senator and I come from the same ward. He told the senator, this young man has been fighting for so long to be MP. He's done so many things. Why are you fighting him? <laughs> the speaker, 
He even left a glass of alcohol on the table at the intercom. When it became apparent that I'd won the nomination, and I wasn't being given the ticket for the ODM. The speaker, he don't advise me to go to court after the ticket was given somebody else. I finally got the ticket, Mr. Speaker. The guy was so generous, not just with what he had, Mr. Speaker, but with words and advice. The speaker, he was such a good mentor. He will tell you that I know you are, you are hard-headed, but this is the right thing to do. The speaker, if I may joke about it, so he told me, that, David, you're a young man joining politics. And you know that as young, a young man, you're going to have so many girls around you. You know? So... I never allow any woman to enter your car. So speaker, I've never allowed any lady to enter my car in my constituency. <laughs> <laughs> my, my wife is not any other woman. <laughs> because he, he, he could advise you on how to navigate your way through service and through serving, even in this house. My joining of the circle was because of Jacoyo. He told you that, you know, you, you're going to spend money around here, but when the day comes for the elections, you won't have much. So make sure that you go to the circle. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, Jacoyo cared. So three weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, less than three weeks ago, on 31st, on 30th of last month, Mr. Speaker, when the president came to Sierra County, Mr. Speaker, I shed a tear. When a member of parliament who had served for three terms, not just ordinary member, but up to a whip, Mr. Speaker, was being blocked from entering where the president was. He was being told you can't enter because you're a former member of parliament. Three weeks ago, Mr. Speaker, on 30th, on Sunday, in his constituency, not anyone else, to launch projects that I'm so sure he was part of lobbying for. But the police and some guards, Mr. Speaker, it was so disheartening. And Mr. Speaker, as we discuss, for example, how to ensure that the former prime minister, the former speaker, the former minister have worked, Mr. Speaker, if a member serves here for three terms, we're going to get Mr. Speaker. There must be a way to deal with it. We must ensure that, Mr. Speaker, as a House, we pass some laws that ensure that, because you cannot then leave Parliament after three years, and they can just play with you willy-nilly. Mr. Speaker, I was so disheartened, Mr. Speaker. A person of Jacoyo's state, Mr. Speaker, a person who personified debate, Mr. Speaker, when he rose to speak, and I was in this house last, last time, everybody here would keep quiet because they knew that he would speak sense. The speaker, he knew how to navigate his way across the aisle. And he told some of us how to navigate living in parliament. The speaker, like the only body with the speaker said, Mr. Speaker, the choir will tell you that the reason you're going to sports is not that you're going to be a good player or you're going to be a good, a, a good you know, footballer. You didn't come here to do football, but you must ensure that you go to sports and then you socialize. You know people. You can understand how members react to different situations, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Jacoy was such a loyal human being to his friends. To the, to the fact and to the effect that Mr. Speaker, and I also spoke about it, in the last elections when he lost, I'm certain, and, and, and I'm sorry to honor Elisha here, that why if not that Jacoyo did not support Honibo Gumbo for governorship of CIA, Jacoyo would be in this parliament as MP. But he said that if ODM is not giving Gumbo his ticket, he will not take the ODM ticket. He was so loyal to his friends. Mr. So Speaker, as we mourn Jacoyo, I would like this parliament to just have one thing in mind. That even as we do our things, let's mentor people who are going to come to this parliament. We are not going to be here forever. Let's give them hope. Let's tell him that Parliament is the best place to be in terms of guiding this house. And he believed in the authority and the capacity of Parliament to solve people's problems. He believed in that so much. There's nothing they call you so that he would not go into this floor of the house. Mr. Speaker, I want to say sorry to the family. They are family friends to us. We'll pray with them. And we hope that God will give them peace. God will give them courage. And God will comfort them. I will not afraid to say that may the Lord rest his peace in eternal, his soul in eternal peace.
Mr. Speaker, thank you. Could we try to, take, to, to be a bit brief? But, because I know there are so many of us who, 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 who have um, a, more issue, more, a moment or so with uh, the Honorable Jacoyo. And uh, so, that, so that we can, be, because you know, you also know the, the, the business that is before us, but uh, I think it's only fair and, uh, and uh, befitting that we allow as many of ourselves to, of us to say something. Honorable Kimunya. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, uh, on behalf of my family and the people of Kimiperi, I would like to convey my condolences to the family uh, of the late uh, Jacob Miduo and the people of GEM who he represented for the 10 years that I served with him together. The 10 we served together, and then he continued to serve when I was out. Uh, I joined this parliament with him in 2002, December, and uh, we, we got to know one another. Then in 2007, after following the elections, uh, we now got into the Grand Coalition together and uh, worked together. And I got to work with him uh, far much more. And uh, as we got to even the tail end, of the, that term, uh, with him as a whip and with me as the deputy leader of government business, then we got conjoined into working together, especially as we brought in the legislation to actualize a new constitution. And he became a very useful ally to me uh, because of our friendship. Uh, working, there was a team we had uh, of Milio Thiambo, Milio Thiambo, Mungatana, there was a young, there was a team that used to sit around the corner, uh, uh, like five of them, who really used to poke holes into every bill that we brought. But uh, uh, using Jacoyo, I was able to get their thinking behind what issues so to eliminate mischief and at least identify that the changes being brought to the law are for the better part of the law. And, and this was a time when you know, we had, you know, I was on the PNU side. He was on the ODM side. But it was actually easier for me to work with him than our own whip. Uh, you know, to pay some, because of, he was always in the house anyway. And uh, on our side, we were very weak in terms of representation. So it's, it's somebody I got to trust and to work with and to get things moving uh, in his house. And we became friends. And... Uh, then after that, we've also appeared together in, on shows and uh, over radio, uh, over on TV. And, and, I, and I know his thinking, his commitment and all that was more of parliament. The kind of thing we're talking about, where we need people to be educated, to dedicate their time to parliament, rather than just thinking of, you know, coming in, sign up, and, and dash out. But he actually dedicated his time uh, here, and people got to, to know him. So we will miss a good leader, uh, it's unfortunate he passed on at 54 is quite a tender age, but uh, we, we leave that to, to God and uh, uh, we can only say we'll miss him, uh, it's at the prime of his life, we will miss what he would have done for the people of the game, what he would have done for the people of Kenya with his experience, and at this point we can only pray for his family to have the comfort to go through this uh, situation that has befallen them uh, rather suddenly. And uh, I would ask that members, uh, in a traditional way, I, I don't know whether it's Honorable uh, Elisha who will be mobilizing that, uh, that you know, in a compassionate way, we can see how to uh, join the family in, uh, in uh, giving him a, a befitting, a befitting uh, send off. Uh, as I'm, I'm thinking of, as the MP, obviously working with the, with the leader of the minority party, uh, you let us, you guide us into how members can participate uh, in, uh, in, in uh, helping uh, the family to overcome the financial burden associated with, as we pray for them to overcome the grief uh, that that one does not complicate uh, the other. And also as part of our contribution to sending our colleague uh, uh, off. So with those words, I really want to say uh, once again, 
it's, it's a loss to all of us. And that's why for the family, people of Gem, uh, the Kenyan nation, people who used to listen to him every Monday. I think he was appearing on a TV show every Monday and almost every day. And uh, as part of public participating in uh, bringing up issues uh, to the Kenyan people. So we will miss him and may the Lord keep his, uh, uh, his soul in eternal peace and uh, with eternal light uh, shining uh, on him. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Eseli. Honorable members, I'm aware that uh, the members from CIA have all indicated that, they, 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 that, that some are saying they're either aunties or uncles, <laughs> grandfathers, and, gra and the children or grandchildren to the, But please, allow, allow, they allow the voices of Kenya because the Honorable Joko Mediwo, and for those of you who may not know, I, I personally would wish to appreciate the role that the Honorable Mediwo played in revision of our, of our standing orders. The current standing orders have a lot of imprint of, from the Honorable Joko Mediwo. And therefore, I think that's just, I know, I, I, of course, I do appreciate, uh, you know, those concerns, but uh, let us also allow other members from other parts of the country to eulogize uh, our late brother. Honorable Eseli. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Tongaren constituency, I wish to extend my deep felt condolences to the family of the late Washington Jakoyo Mediwo. I first met Jakoyo Mediwo when I came to Parliament in 2007. That time, Jakoyo Mediwo was the chief whip for ODM. And Mr. Speaker, I must say from, from the outset that actually Jakoyo struck terror to the PNU side <laughs> because of his organizational skills. And that time I was able to observe it sort of detached because on the PNU side, I was the only Fort Kenya MP. So I was able to masquerade on both sides. And I observed that Jacoyo's organization skills made the ODM team so formidable that to counter them effectively, the PNU side had to go an extra mile. And he was so persistent and so insistent about what he believed in. And this made it very difficult for the other side to be able to counter what he was doing. Mr. Speaker, that said, he was also a very friendly person. In that, in the evening, in the members' lounge, you could always have a drink with him and have a chat with him. And he had a lot of advice for those of us who had just come into parliament as to how to make your mark in parliament, how to actually read research about uh, bills and things like those. And in fact, at one point, he held my hand as I brought the bill that eventually came up to be the Human Resource Management Act that's being used now. He actually put me through the paces before that act was enacted, enacted. He was a good debater. And in fact, this being a good debater extended even after he, he didn't make it back to parliament. That we met on the TV show that you are saying AM Live on NTV. And he was always very jovial. But one thing he never did, he never said yes when he meant no. He said it as it is. Whether you felt offended or not, but eventually you'll find that what he has told you is what he saw. So he did not, uh, he did not mince words. If you have displeased him, he'll tell you so, but in a friendly way, that in the end, you'll still remain friendly with him. If he was also jovial in a way. There's one joke he kept on telling us about the time he was accused of having frequented the Koinange Street. And he went for the campaign in his constituency and he knew that his days were over because that was the main accusation flying around. Then somebody just stood up and said, Jakoyo is the man because he's not running after men, he's running after, after women, so he's not, a, he's not a gay. And that changed the mood and Jakoyo made it back to parliament. He kept on telling that joke, he had his own way of, of saying that joke and he would make all of us laugh in the members lounge. After he left parliament, I've interacted with him several times and he has remained hopeful and always encouraging 
to those of us who are his friends. May his soul rest in eternal peace. Honorable Pukose. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the great people of Endebes and my family, I want to send my message of condolence to the family and the people of Game following the death of Honorable Washington Chako Midio. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Jakoyo used to sit on the other side there in the last parliament. And we are also, I was also a member with him in the, first, in the Committee of Health and Catering. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Jakoyo Midio contributed to the changing of health and catering to the facility and services. He's actually the one who contributed a lot when we met and we were able to discuss and agree that this is supposed to be for facilities and services for members. He even went further. This committee is supposed to have even oversighted the Parliamentary Service Commission, actually, because there is no committee that oversights Parliamentary Service co uh, Commission. It is supposed to be the faci Facility and Services Committee that should oversight Parliamentary Service Commission. Even their budget, they should be able to present that. That is actually the Jacoyo that I know. Honorable Speaker, when the President visited uh, CIA and uh, Honorable Jacoyo, I read in the papers that he was denied entry into the Bondo Water Services, which the President was uh, opening. Uh, I think that was a very sad moment. And uh, I, I think uh, those who, are, who did that, I think they should be ashamed of themselves because honorable members, whether you've been, so long as you've been here in parliament, you've served your time, but you must be respected. Honorable speaker, just another point which I think should be looked by the Parliamentary Service Commission on the same breath is the members who have retired from this house or members who are on pension, they are held cover should also be looked into because you find that there are members who have, who have not used even their health cafe for all the period which they have been here in parliament. But once they, have, uh, they are on pension, you find that somebody becomes sick there out and is not able to access any medical cafe. I think it's a high time that we need to look at the pension for the members and so that pension includes health care cafe for them so that when they retire from the house or they are on pension, they are able to access good medical care outside there, not just even members alone, but even retired Kenyans. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to say may his soul rest in eternal peace. Good well, um, Member for Lego Songa. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, I take this opportunity on behalf of my family and the people of Alego Songa to pass our sincere condolences to the family of the Honorable Washington Jacoy Midiwo. Honorable Speaker, I met Jacoy when I was still in the banking industry where I used to work. When I developed interest to join politics, uh, I, I looked for him and I held a meeting with him and I wanted him to guide me in how to maneuver the uh, the field of politics. And uh, he asked me a few questions, and uh, I answered those questions to me. I think you can be a good politician. So during the period of uh, running to 2022, running to 2017, when we were out looking for votes, I was aligned to him in the uh, political matrix of the Sierra County. But unfortunately, in our camp, uh, I, I was the only one who was uh, lucky to win the ODM ticket. Uh, our governorial candidate and uh, the, the whole team lost. So we, he moved to independent, to be an independent candidate, and I moved, uh, I campaigned as an ODM candidate. And we only met after I was sworn in, after the elections, and I was sworn in. And uh, we met at the airport. And the he was happy to see me, and we had a very good conversation. But it, he, he told me that since I was elected, he had observed a few things which I did which were not going to help me. And he told me that, one, 
you work a lot with the youths, eh? with the bodybuilders. Build, body so I want to ask you to stop, drop that. And you also told me that uh, there are many mistakes that politicians make, which is that when they are elected, they don't pick calls. I want to ask you to pick all the calls that come your way. Never, never, uh, never, uh, you know, uh, uh, switch off your phones. And I think this is something that uh, Honorable Bombardi alluded to. Honorable Speaker, I think that those two lessons that I was given by Jacoyo has really helped me in my political journey because I, I do not uh, switch off my phones. And uh, I dropped, you know, the idea of walking around with uh, a lot of youths like I am walking in my enemy territory. But Honorable Speaker, there's one thing that I want to thank uh, Jacoyo for, and this is something that I have also learned. Jacoyo is somebody who will, would never hold any grudge with anyone. I remember uh, in the recent past, in our uh, county, poli county politics, we have not been reading from the same script. But in many occasions when we have met with Jacoyo, he will never talk to you about your political differences. He, he would talk to you about the current issues, and he will never hold any grudge, and he would treat you like you are his friend. I think that uh, I said, and I said yesterday, Honorable Speaker, when we received the news of his demise, that for us as a county, we have lost uh, a progressive leader, a formidable leader. The politics in Sierra is going to change because for a long time and up to the most recent, even when Jacoyo was not in this parliament, the politics in Sierra always revolved around Jacoyo. You are either with or against Jacoyo. And I think uh, for us as young leaders, I want to say that uh, there's a lot that we have learned from Jacoyo about, around his political life, around the way he handled his issues, about, around his boldness, around his, the fact that Jacoyo is somebody who will always you know, take a position, irrespective of whether that position is, is against uh, the party or against the establishment. It is something that I think uh, we are going to learn for a long time in our region. We really do not have such politicians like Jacoyo. And therefore, even as we mourn, I want to uh, call upon uh, our people uh, to learn something about Jacoyo. And uh, as the MP for as the MP who represents his uncles, because his mother comes from my constituency, the family has had a lot recently. We lost his uncle. We have lost his sister, who is also married in my constituency. And now we have lost uh, the late owner Bujakoyo Midiwo. We know that these deaths have come in as, uh, many deaths in a span of uh, just uh, two weeks. We know that it is very painful. And I want to thank Honorable Kimunya for urging members to stand with the family of the, of the late. May the Almighty God rest the soul of the Honorable Jacob Midiwo in eternal peace. As I give another member, <clears throat> I just want to remind the House that, uh, and Kenyans in general, those who enjoy consumer protection laws, that the, the Honorable Jacoyo Midio was the architect of that law. And in fact, the provisions in our standing orders requiring that when a member is being discharged, that he should be given an opportunity. You write to the member, give him, give, you must warn the member that you are about to discharge them. Give him an opportunity or her an opportunity to present his or her case. So I know, I know it, it, it's important that we say some of these things as, uh, as we move on, not, as we move on, uh, our late brother, Honorable Duale. I know you worked a lot with Honorable Midiwo. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, it is uh, not even me. I think you have worked with Honorable Jacoyo <laughs> more than anybody else because he was with you in the ninth <laughs> parliament when you were the whip of the opposition, Kanu, and he was in government, NAC. But Mr. Speaker, I, joined, I, I came to learn Honorable Midiwo in uh, 2004, five, when we were together in LDP. But I really worked with him in the 11th parliament when uh, Code and uh, that time uh, TNA, URP, there was a lot of commo uh, commotion. And I'm sure you have seen the video, you know, going round. <laughs> and uh, it's very interesting. Honorable Jacob Medio, Mr. Speaker, was a very fearless leader, very courageous. Mm -hmm. And that shows he was the only man who could stand up to, you know, the ODM party and its leadership. 
And I remember uh, in the 10th parliament, after we formed, uh, we joined together ODM and we became members of parliament in 2007. Somewhere along the way, I was an assistant minister, so I was in the government side. Then around 2009, I was sacked as an assistant minister because of uh, politics. So when I became a backbencher, I had no committee. Mr. Speaker, I had no committee. And Mr. Speaker, that's why you are different from other speakers. And members must know. So I stayed in this house for about three months as a backbencher, sacked from government, and uh, with no committee. So I went to Speaker Marende. Uh, he, he didn't listen to me. And in fact, that led to one of the reasons why I didn't vote for him in the, 20, in the 11th parliament. He was not very kind. I told him, you know, I'm a, I'm a member of parliament for judges. So I met uh, Honorable Jacoyo, a good man. He was a whip and working together with uh, Johnson Mudama, who was from the PNU. So I sat with him in the bar. And I told him, my friend, you know what, uh, Jacoyo, even if uh, I have been sacked and I'm not in good books with ODM, you know I'm entitled to become, uh, to have a committee. And Jacoyo went out of his way and made sure that I joined the committee of energy uh, at that time. But Mr. Speaker, finally, I really want to indulge you now under your leadership, is that uh, the Parliamentary Service Commission must recognize outstanding leaders, not only Jacoyo, but since independence by doing what happens in the House of Commons, in the Australian Parliament, by naming certain facilities and rooms after those leaders. You know, instead of having room seven, room nine, we can have Jacoyo Medio room. We can have uh, Speaker Marendez, uh, you know, room. You know, so that these leaders are remembered. Shikuku, the Honorable Shikuku, the Honorable uh, Ahmed Khalif, you know, those great leaders. And this is, you find it in other jurisdictions. So that even the floors in our, in our new building, they should be, and you know, cafeteria should be named after somebody. The library should be named after somebody. Jean Marin Serene Library, for example, as a speaker. So that uh, these leaders are recognized. Uh, so Jacoy, I think to start with, we can, we can and through the Parliament Service Commission, you can do that. The speaker, you know, Honorable Elisha, is a beneficiary of the fearless and courageous nature of uh, Honorable Jacoyo in the last election. Because Jacoyo was in a team, and I'm not sure whether Honorable Atandi was there, because Atandi, Honorable Atandi, with a lot of respect, doesn't fit in uh, the, the Jacoyo's team. He said he was with him, you know, and the problem is uh, now we can't verify. <laughs> but uh, Ocheng, these are the people who are with Jacoyo. And I, at one time during the election, just to conclude, I, I sat with Jacoyo because we were very good friends, particularly the 11th parliament. Yes. Jacoyo will say no, and we agree with him by the time we're entering the chamber. And I'll agree with him, I'll tell him, you are the opposition leader, you are the minority leader with Honorable Nyanze, take your position, I'll take my position, we'll see the numbers. At times we agree, this is of national interest, let us do a bipartisan. So by the time I'm coming to the chamber, I knew the position of Jacoyo, and I, he, know, he knows my position. So, to the last general election, I sat with him and I told him, my friend, I have been with you in ODM since 2007. In fact, in LDP, you can't fight Baba. And uh, I, I can see you are pushing, and you really want Honorable Gumbo, another man I have a lot of respect for, one of the very few independent minded leaders from the lake, you know? Uh, people like Honorable Shaquille Shabir, and uh, people like uh, so Jacoyo, I told him, please, don't, don't put a lot of push and investment in this candidature of Honorable Gumbo. It might cost you your seat. And that's what happened, and that is what brought Honorable Elisha uh, to this house. <laughs> Apart from the many votes you got. So, Mr. Speaker, I think we will ask, we will ask Honorable Elisha and Honorable John Bundy, maybe tomorrow, that they start uh, collecting. I think Honorable, we need to stand with the family of our colleague. Uh, or the, he, was a, he was one of the few leaders under the new constitution in our own parliamentary uh, jurisdiction. Under the new constitution, he is a deputy minority leader, the first of its kind uh, in this house. 
So I think we will uh, sit as leaders, as friends, and make sure that uh, the family he left behind and colleagues uh, also will not be left. Mr. Speaker, we say it in our religion, in chapter 3, verse 185 of the Holy Quran, every soul will test death. So death is imminent, death will come. The only question is when, and I, I hope that uh, when he meets his uh, creator, all that he will be judged is what he has done for the Almighty God when he was in this worldly affair. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, honor members, I, have, uh, I am now between a rock and a hard place. Those of you who understand the parliamentary procedures, today is the third and final allotted day. And this session goes on up to 6.30. Unless we do a supplemental order paper to push the third and the fourth allotted day to the period between 7 and 9.30, which I don't know whether it is unless there is uh, another motion, may not be possible because even that was slotted to be the first allotted day for supply. So, honor members, uh, I know, as, and I can see there's a lot of interest to eulogize our brother. I mean, I don't, I, I, now, this is a problem. I know the Honorable Malwa worked with the Honorable Jacob Midiwo very, very closely in the last parliament. If you could take a, just thank a you, minutes. thank you, Mr. Speaker. I stand here with a very heavy heart, and on behalf of my family, the people of Kimilini constituency and Transoya County at large, we send our message of condolence to the family of the late Washington Jacoyo Midiwo. Mr. Speaker, the Bible in the Book of Ecclesiastes, the Bible says there is time for everything. There is time to be born and there is time to die, Mr. Speaker. Jacob Medio has gone very early. Mr. Speaker, I worked with this Jacob Medio. I used to sit here, we used to sit next to each other. He was our team leader, Mr. Speaker. He was a fearless, astute legislator, Mr. Speaker, very charismatic, and he was a team player. Mr. Speaker, just like what William Shakespeare said, Mr. Speaker, that all of us we are on this earth just like performers in a play. It is like a stage where we are acting but will eventually exit. But as you exit, what legacy do you leave behind? Jacoyo Medio leaves behind a strong legacy of team working, Mr. Speaker. He leaves behind a strong legacy of charisma, Mr. Speaker. He used to lead us here. He was a deputy majority by not the leader, Mr. Speaker. But every time, people confused that he was the majority leader, minority leader because Nyenze was the minority leader and he was a deputy. And when I joined parliament, Mr. Speaker, he told me that if you want to be a good legislator, Mr. Speaker, you must learn by attending parliamentary sittings. That's what he told me, Mr. Speaker. And that is the same message I've been giving my other colleagues who are joining for the first time, like uh, Honorable... Amilemba, and the MP for Mashima Kavinga. That if you want to learn to be a good legislator, you must learn by attending parliament. And he told me, Mr. Speaker, you should not miss two books. This is the standing order and the constitution. That was the goal of Mr. Speaker. I served with him in the house business, in the committee of appointments, and I was also with him in the committee of defense and foreign relations. He used to lead us very well, Mr. Speaker. At that time, Mr. Speaker, the temperatures were very high. And before any matter came on the floor of the House, Mr. Speaker, there was that consultation between Honorable Mediwo and Dwale. I also want to thank Dwale, Mr. Speaker. He has been a good leader. He's one person who has very good interpersonal skills. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. He was kicked out. I was also kicked out, Mr. Speaker, from leadership. And Mediwo called me. And he told me, my brother, you're still young. You have a still have a better future. Let life continue. I was kicked out and now you can see I'm strong, Mr. Speaker. I was encouraged by Mediwo. And he, did, he also told me what had been done in the backyard. And about last week we were discussing with Honorable 
my friend here, Honorable Elisha. And I want to thank Elisha because, Mr. Speaker, he's not among the people who blocked Medivo from accessing the president. We were discussing last week. And I told him, you've done well on the constituency, but you've not done well in legislation like Jago Medivo. And I told him you should increase your contact hours on the floor of the House. And you can see he's seated here, Mr. Speaker. And for you, if you want to learn parliamentary matters, you must learn by attending. If you come, you sign in, you sign out. You'll not learn, Mr. Speaker. And this I learned from Jacob Mediwo. So we are praying to Almighty God to give his family fortitude at this difficult time. And he was also a prayerful person because we used to be with him in the National Prayer Breakfast. We've lost a great friend, Mr. Speaker. May his soul rest in peace. Now, honor members, because there are so many of you who have made the requests, and I have to balance now this, uh, the need between you having to eulogize our late brother and the need for us to go to the third and final allotted day for the business appearing in order number 11. So, so I have to balance and uh, therefore we we'll strike a balance on our members. One minute and it will be timed here. When you see the yellow light, you know you have 30 seconds. Yeah? Honorable Wangwe. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I'll do take one minute. Honorable Speaker, on behalf of the people of Navaholo and that of my own behalf, allow me, Honorable Speaker, to pass my sincere condolences to the family of the late uh, Jakoyo Mediwo, Washington. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Jakoyo made a statement here which I would want to remember during the security bill. He did caution us, I was a first MP, and he did caution us and said, make laws that are for, for posterity. Make laws that will favor you when you are out of government and when you are in government. Honorable Speaker, that statement leaves me always. When I'm a majority whip, Honorable Speaker, I'm able to extend my, my service to those on the minority side without Honorable Speaker considering that they are the minority side and this is the majority side. We serve one government and we serve one parliament. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. May God rest his soul in eternity. Member for Migori County. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for this opportunity. I also arise on behalf of myself and uh, Sona West and the entire Migori County to say pole to the family of Jacoyo Midio. I was not a member of parliament then, but a board chair of some very small school which had only one classroom. And my husband was another board chair in another school. These two schools in my local community, Machicha and Kitabai, were in need. And so, Honorable Ndiege introduced me to Jakoyo Midiwo, and I was amazed at his humility, generosity. He came and supported me, and we raised the first 3.6 million in Arambe that was ever held in that region. May God rest his soul in peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member for Yembe Central. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on my own behalf, my family and that of uh, the people of great people of Yembe Central, I pass my uh, condolences to the family of Jacoyo Mindiwo, who happened to be my colleague in the last parliament. He was an astute debater. He was a very, he had a lot of interpersonal uh, uh, capacities, and he was one of the few members of parliament who would really challenge Duala in this uh, uh, parliament. And uh, he was uh, very uh, sincere in his debate, and also when he meant to oppose something, he opposed it with a lot of reason and uh, with a lot of caution, and if he had to uh, uh, appreciate anything, he did it so in the same marshal. May he so rest in the internal peace. Thank you. Member Voyata. Member for Yata, Honorable Kelonso, it's not, it's not there. He left his. Uh, member for Emohaya. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I take this opportunity to also pass my condolences as uh, myself, Mboko Milemba, and the people of Emohaya. We are his neighbors, and I call him uncle because my mother came from where his home is. We had a chance of visiting him. And I agree with the Honorable 
Honorable Amalwa, he told me to sit in parliament. He told me not to be walking out and bouncing. He told me that's the most important thing when you're in parliament. And we had wanted to change him from, from, from ODM to NC that time. I went with the, my party leader. We were unable, but uh, that is it. Uh, may the Lord rest his soul in peace. Member for Moranga County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I join my colleagues uh, in eulogizing my friend, Honorable Jacob Mbidio. He was a friend um, and also a person whom I met in this house was very clean-hearted, a good debater. And today, Honorable Dwale has confirmed my, my worries then that because I used to see that they used to collude both of them, though they were on different sides. He was a very great leader and Honorable Speaker, it's sad that when the issue of somebody who was calling me came up, Honorable Jacob is the one who helped me to arrest uh, the guy, and today I was in court this afternoon, three years down the line, the hearing was today, and unfortunately he will not give you evidence because the hearing started, started today. But I'll say I've lost a friend, a great leader, and may he rest in peace. Member for Siaya County. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I take this opportunity to convey my condolences to the family of Jacoyo Midio. Jacoyo Midio is somebody I've known since childhood. We grew up together, even though I'm much older. And Jacoyo Midio has performed marvelously as a politician. The game people, the people of Siaya, have a lot of respect for Jacoyo Midio for the debate he held in here and the way he was very eloquent very forceful and very determined. He has remained a history in the people of game. They rate Jacoyo as one of the best politicians that game people have produced alongside my late brother-in-law, Oki Ooko Ombaka, Mama Grace Ogot, and Arguing Skodek. That is why they have rated Jacoyo Midiwa. I take this opportunity to tell you that Member for North Hall. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to really eulogize the passing of a great friend and a colleague, Honorable Jacob Mijiwo. We met many years ago in the States, later we met in this house. Um, Mr. Speaker said he was a great man, a great leader, a very fine gentleman. And Mr. Speaker said, when we were in ODM, he was always a voice of reason and was able to go beyond regions beyond um, um, entities to see us as Kenyans and was a great leader. I pray God to raise his soul in eternal peace and also to give his family fortitude to overcome these challenging times. May his soul rest in peace. Honorable Professor Adur. Thank you, Honorable. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. As I eulogize uh, Jacoyo, I want to say not just charisma, but heart set. Honorable Speaker, I want to say that Jacoyo Otada times four, solid, bold, courageous. Honorable Speaker, Kenya right now needs not just politicians, but leaders. And Jacoyo Midiwo is a clear example as we listen not only to what is being said here, Honorable Speaker, but even to what... Nashukuru sana mshimu wa speaker Niongetu kwa niaba ya yangu, familia Na watu ya Nakuru Townies Constituency Kuleta rambi rambi kwa familia na jamaa za ndugu yangu Jakoyo Midio Ambaye tulijuana katika uh, bunge ya kumina moja Na niseme Jakoyo kwa yale mambo ambaye alifanya wakati ule Alitufunza mengi sana wakati alipokuwa akifanya debate Na sana sana uh, speaker, Jakoya alikuwa ni mtu ambaye alikuwa informed sana. E, tulikuwa tunamweshimu bwana Dwale, lakini wa ile information Dwale alikuwa nae, Jakoya had always an answer for that. And I, I respected Jakoya for the uh, ile mambo ambaye alikuwa kitoa wakati ule, ya kuweza kutupatia kama wageni katika bunge hili, kuweza kuweka miswada. Hasa na alikuwa kiniambia vile alishirikia katika ile kupitisha constitution ya 2010. Thank you. I want to eulogize my dear brother uh, Jokoye Mudigo. 
He was a very, very strong person and a great support. But as the chairman of APNAC, he was one of our strongest fighters for corruption. I remember, Mr. Chair, that Jokoyo Mudivo, Isaac Maura, and myself stopped the Prime Minister of Malaysia in 2015 from opening the anti-corruption workshop. Up to date, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, sir, the Malaysians still remember that particular event. Jokoyo was fearless and he was very much a fighter against corruption. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance also to uh, give my condolence to the family of uh, Honorable Jokoyo Midio. I knew uh, Jokoyo Midio, Honorable Speaker, in the 11th Parliament, and he was a forthright uh, member of Parliament, Mr. Speaker. He was very versatile when he was on the floor of the House, Mr. Speaker. Jokoyo was friendly to everybody, to all members uh, of Parliament, Mr. Speaker, during his time as a member of Parliament. He was a team player, Mr. Speaker, and he would share uh, his thoughts with others, like us during that time when we were still uh, young in this House, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this House has lost or oh, this nation has lost a great uh, a politician, a leader whom we will uh, remember forever. Thank you, uh, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Tongi, Nyaraka. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. I want to take this opportunity on my own behalf and on behalf of the people of Nyaribari Chache, where I represent Honorable Speaker, to share my condolences with the rest of Kenyans of uh, losing such a great leader. Honorable Chakoyo Midewo, a couple of weeks, months ago, he trained us in Mombasa, Marindi, where he told me that he had just cleared his master's in diplomacy. And he gave us a very good training in matters of diplomacy, Honorable Speaker. Little did I know that he was going to pass on in such a short period of time. He, we will remember him as one of the peacemakers, a man who stood for the good of the country, just like you, Mr. Speaker. He meant well for the country, and he never cared where you come from. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you very much, honorable members. Uh, finished the interventions. Uh, and we say, may his soul rest in eternal peace. Honorable members, I'm only looking at what is uh, on the... No, you can't. Now you are putting now, surely. No, but the, 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 now you are beginning to, put, to, to press the intervention button at this hour. Surely, honorable members. No, they were not showing. There was nothing. No, oh, no members, um, I'm sure many of you who may not, who, who might not have gotten the opportunity, please. I'm sure we can, all, we can also find time to go and condole with the family. At, uh, not, they are very, you are very many. Honor oh, members, I'm telling you, we have less than um, one, and a half, one, one hour, 15 minutes to do the last final allotted day. You know, some of you may not have, even now, and that's why we, we really, I'm, 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 I, I think I really also needed to eulogize, eulogize uh, my brother, my friend, uh, the late Medivh. Some of you have not been able to even internalize business. That's, that's why you, you, I, you know, that's why sometimes we really, really wish that uh, the late Honorable Medivh would be in the chamber to also explain some of you that who, who, who have momentary lapses of memory. Because it's not, I think you just forget. I've, I told you, well, the reason why I said one minute is so as to balance. And since you are not, you are not placed, you are not placed your interventions at that time, please let's just, let's just uh, be content with that so that we can uh, go to the next order. I know many of you may really have wanted, and not even one, even one minute has not been sufficient. I'm sure many of you may have much more to say about the Honorable Medieval. But uh, there's just so much that we can do. Let's, let's be content with what has, what has been said. And uh, because we are still around, let's find time. The Honorable Elisha has just informed me that he was going to go to, the home, to his home to find out uh, what arrangements. And perhaps tomorrow he can give us some information so that maybe many of us can also go there and uh, condole with the family. 
let's just let's just be content with the, what has been said. Move to the next order. Order number eight, the trustees perpetual succession amendment bill, National Assembly Bill number 23 of 2021, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the trustee perpetual succession act and for connected purposes. Order number nine, the perpetu perpetuities and accumulations amendment bill National Assembly Bill number 24 of 2021, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to amend the Perpetuities and Accumulations Act and for connected purposes. Order number 10, the Certified Managers Bill, National Assembly Bill number 26 of 2021, first reading. A bill for an act of parliament to establish the Institute of Certified Managers to provide for the registration and regulation of the standards and practice of the profession and for connected purposes. Order number 11, motion. Consideration of the budget estimates for the financial year 2021 2022, general debate, third and final allotted day. Well, uh, the Honorable Shinali was on the floor and uh, has a balance of eight minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As I support uh, the motion uh, on the budget estimates. Uh, budget estimates 2021-22. Uh, Mr. Speaker, my first take will be uh, uh, looking at uh, areas which uh, the budget might have uh, left out or completely or given uh, uh, low, fu uh, low funds, yet uh, if supported, they would generate uh, revenue for this country, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, the sugar industry in the Western region is an area which uh, 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 the budget estimates uh, the, uh, the Treasury has left out completely Mr. Speaker, there was uh, a tax force which was uh, put in place, uh, chaired by uh, Chairman of Council of Governors and uh, the Minister for Agriculture, Mr. Chair. Which, Mr. Speaker, uh, proposed that uh, the sugar industries would be privatized. Surprisingly, Mr. Speaker, the privatization commission has only the chair. It does not have any other members. So nothing on that front has been done, uh, Mr. Speaker. Yet uh, farmers are suffering, and they have the they they, they can't um, uh, they can't see their factories helping them. They are just dead elephants, white elephants, Mr. Speaker, lying there. Another uh, area is mining, Mr. Speaker. Uh, along the western region to Nyanza, Mr. Speaker, we have uh, artisan mining. There is a rich uh, minerals there, including coal and copper, Mr. Speaker. There has been no uh, allocations to Ministry of Mining. In 2017, when we came here, state, uh, mining had a full-fledged Ministry of Mining, Mr. Speaker. It was reduced to a state department in mining. And right now, it is just a desk, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there was a proposal to have a gold refinery in Kakamega County and a granite uh, factory in uh, Vihiga, Mr. Speaker. Looking at the allocations, Mr. Speaker, to start off as a seed, 
as I see the finance, Mr. Speaker, we have only 13 million. What would that 13 million do, Mr. Speaker? On education, Mr. Speaker, these estimates have given uh, employment of teachers. We know there is a COVID uh, pandemic right now, which has come with uh, other requirements, Mr. Speaker. We need to employ teachers. The teacher-student ratio is so, is so uh, poor, Mr. Speaker. And uh, these estimates have suggested an employment of 5,000 teachers. Mr. Speaker, 5,000 are not enough, although they are trying to do good, because maybe the revenues are not behaving well, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, in this area, we need to employ more teachers. Uh, uh, my, my thinking would be, Mr. Speaker, there is an addition, maybe through supplementary, that uh, we employ more teachers uh, uh, to get for our young ones, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, another area which uh, I feel funds should, have been, should, should, should be enhanced, should uh, revenue uh, uh, collection behave well, Mr. Speaker, or increase in that matter, is uh, the funds that go directly to the grassroots, Mr. Speaker. We have the Women Fund, which we have seen allocated only 120, Mr. Speaker. This is a fund which reaches the Mamamboka, Mr. Speaker, on the ground. The fund that reaches small business people, they borrow money from the government because, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, these people cannot access uh, funds through the banks which have uh, stringent uh, regulations or uh, uh, requirements, Mr. Speaker, to borrow money. The youth fund is an area also where, Speaker, m funds should be in, uh, enhanced. We have seen them given 435 million countrywide, Mr. Speaker, and uh, this is a feeling that uh, this particular uh, uh, the areas which would spur uh, uh, economic growth should be funded more, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, touching on agriculture, we know very well Kenya is a signatory to uh, international uh, declarations like Maputo and the uh, uh, Colabo declarations, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, despite the fact that uh, agriculture is devolved, we need a policy to see that uh, at least uh, we are able to, to adhere to those uh, declarations that we have uh, signed to for, uh, for making sure, Mr. Speaker, that at least 10% of our, our budget is allocated to agriculture, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is an area where, Mr. Speaker, maybe there, there should be some guidance because there are resolutions, Mr. Speaker, of this uh, parliament that are made, uh, Mr. Speaker, and uh, nothing is done about it when we, it comes to budget. Mr. Speaker, there are ex councillors who have served this country, Mr. Speaker, and you know once you've been a politician, Mr. Speaker, whether elected or nominated, your chances of getting a job out there becomes limited. The Senate, Mr. Speaker, resolved that uh, these ex, ex councillors be paid a honorarium of 1.5 million uh, uh, one off and uh, 30,000 maybe monthly, Mr. Speaker. Our ex councillors are languishing uh, uh, in poverty, and Mr. Speaker, there's no one to hold their hand, Mr. Speaker. This is an area, Mr. Speaker, this House maybe should resolve to see to it that our colleagues, because now this is uh, like a club, once you become a politician, Mr. Speaker, they need to be. Uh, uh, helped, Mr. Speaker. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I wish to speak on issue of uh, stalled projects, Mr. Speaker, and uh, uh, pending bills. Mr. Speaker, we have so many stalled projects which government has put in money countrywide, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there is these stalled projects like Mitiani House, Mr. Speaker, where government is pumping in money it's 35 years old, Mr. Speaker. Some of us in this house, or some members in this house, 35 years, maybe they were not born, Mr. Speaker. But that Mitihani House is still there, and uh, uh, the Examination Council is paying rents uh, to 
business people, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we have also our own here where we are constructing the office block, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this office block has taken now, since I came in this parliament, it was ongoing. Up to now, every year we are putting in money, and uh, it is not over yet. Every time we have given uh, timelines of joining, uh, uh, of occupying the same house, but up to date, Mr. Speaker, there's nothing happening, and this parliament is spending 300 million, approximately 300 million every, ma every year on rent, Mr. Speaker. So for 10 years, Mr. Speaker, that is about 3 billion shillings that has been spent. That is a cost of another building, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want also to comment on pending bills, Mr. Speaker. Pending bills is an issue. Mr. Speaker, the President has, on, has given a directive on the same. This House, whenever we, we, we make our budget, we give our recommendations, Mr. Speaker, and uh, uh, Treasury seems not to uh, take our recommendations seriously, Mr. Speaker. Re pending bills both on the county government and in the national government, Mr. Speaker, are monies that our people, Kenyan business people, have borrowed to do business. And, Mr. Speaker, those business people trusted the government. They thought the best partner to do with business is government, Mr. Speaker. But to their, to their surprise and dismay, Mr. Speaker, the money has stuck. The county governments have made people poor, Mr. Speaker. People have sold their properties. People are languishing in poverty. People who were trying out to make their life, Mr. Speaker, including even youth, Mr. Speaker. This issue of pending bills, Mr. Speaker, need to be, to be addressed, and once for all, Mr. Speaker, pending bills must be put as the first charge, because when the CS Treasury comes here, National Treasury comes here, that is what he pronounces himself to. We need to verify and make sure uh, pending bills are paid, uh, Mr. Speaker, and once that money goes on the ground, to our people, Mr. Speaker, you'll find a lot of money in Kenya, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want now to take this also opportunity, that is why I was hurrying to join my colleagues, Mr. Speaker, to, uh, may, to say, to pass my condolences, Mr. Speaker, to the family of uh, Honre Bojakoyo Midiwa, on behalf of my family, my, my constituency, people of Ikolomani, Mr. Speaker, Jakoyo was my friend. I interacted with him the first time, Mr. Speaker, when I was running as a member of parliament for Ekolomani during a by-election in 2010. I, he supported me, Mr. Speaker. I ran on ODM ticket. He was, uh, ODM by that time was very premium, Mr. Speaker, premium party, but he helped me to get the ticket, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That's all. rally in the world is back in Kenya. Catch all the action of WRC Safari Rally live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 from 24th to 27th June. See the world's best drivers navigate their machines on Kenya's rough terrain at breakneck speeds. Experience the thrills, adrenaline, drama and excitement as man and machine do battle. Don't miss out. WRC Safari Rally, live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. Your true sports partner. Tonight on KBC Channel 1. Max is your brother. He's not. He's my stepbrother, and that will not stop me from erasing him from my life, mother. Don't tell me you're going to stop me now. Oh, yes, Come on. yes, I do. Anything suspicious? No, no, fortunately nothing, but, but we shouldn't get careless. No, 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 no. That means... 
The girl that Horia is in love with is... Isuliana. I'm sorry, Mother, but your son has to die, too. Wow. 